shuts it down. Oh, it's yeah! You've got to be kidding me! And it's Optic, the masters of disaster! <laughs> Optic outpacing their nightmare by chasing the dream! Don't be afraid of the dark. <laughs> walk away with the trophy side show the pressure is truly on the pressure's on and both of these teams have had such different routes to this spot in the grand finals optic have already played more rounds already before the grand finals begun than any masters champion anybody who won champions it has been a long grueling route and they have fought it with blood sweat and tears whereas loud have just kind of breezed their way here and i think that applies in itself, a little more of that pressure. Doug, you were speaking earlier about how Les went crazy the last time that they performed. Oh, Aspas dropped off a little bit. I feel like we've seen throughout Loud's run a, a very small sample size where certain players step up hugely and then some others might disappear. I still don't know what I'm gonna get from this Loud team and these Loud players. Yeah, it's interesting that you mentioned how uh, both or how different players have stepped up on the side of Lad because I think Optic has been a bit of the same story, right? Like you've had moments where Ye is Ye, you've had Victor have the crazy run that he's had, you've also had Marv who's just he's quite literally just taken over at 
points, right? Where he just kind of puts it on his back. <laughs> yeah. So it really is interesting to see how that matches up. And when you when you put it on a stage like this with the stakes that are in play here, it really does kind of come to who wants it more. I think the difference, though, between the two variable variability within the team is that Optic has had a chance to sink into that variability and understand where their weaknesses in that regard are and for everybody to feel comfortable at some point during the tournament. So for it to peak here in the Grand Finals, I think that's a great point as they have so many rounds played. I'm so glad you guys mentioned this because uh, in this Grand Final, I feel like at this point of the tournament, there isn't that one or even two players that's guaranteed an MVP. I think today, sure? I think today is where uh, Saisho, that could really come alight. If one of these players can pull out the performance like Marv did yesterday, for example, yeah. or less, uh, I, I would be surprised if they don't come out as the MVP. I think there's genuinely five players probably in the run yeah. for MVP for this tournament, which is crazy to see. So I just, it all comes down to this. Who can step up when it really matters? Yeah, we're into the Prime Gaming Agent Select, and now Ascent is the first map. We're not really expecting any changes here. It's no. pretty tried and tested at this point. Yeah, but I think uh, you could already see some themes as you watch these teams play these two maps. Who is important? I think Marv was clearly so important on that game as well, but Pancata too, in the way that they anchor. Oh. And the KOs and the way that the Killjoys play around it. I think this is more a strategical game than anything, and then you go to the head-to-head. -head. I think that ends up being the real difference maker. When I talked about the op kills and the difference in that, Aspas versus the edge. Yeah, I mean, Sadak and Aspas were setting each other up fantastically for that aggressive defense. And Pancada just locked down the sights once you actually got there. And Optic just got nothing done on their attack side the last time these two teams played. FNS must have got some idea of how to change that. Well, these two teams are the best of the best. And speaking of the best of the best, here are your casters for the grand finals, Hypok and Pansy. Far too kind, and, and what a great desk, by the way. But what an intro for some of those players walking out. Man, I'm, I'm in pieces already. But look, we have to talk about this because it's now best of five, right? We are now in the marathon run. Optics already kind of been running for a while at this yeah, point. Yeah. Loud's kind of just done everything that was asked of them. Can't say a bad word about them. They've turned up, did exactly what's requested. But now we're in the longer run here, Mike. Talk me to where your expectations lay. I, I think the desk nailed it, and the, and the term is they've breezed their way here, right? Sure. And it has sure. felt like a little bit of a stroll, a, a stumble here and there. but it has been a fairly flawless run, right? But very small data sample. That, that's the only thing I'll preface that with. And Optic have shown us their recovery factor time and time again at this event. Perfect. I want to expand on that, but we are live. There's no waiting around. Welcome to the grand finals. It's Optic on the defending side. And of course, that means Lau will be on the attack. And we get to finally see what this looks like. Tangible results after all that theory crafting. <laughs> all that chip Look damage. The, damage. the absolute state of them. The walking wounded. You've got Les, Sadak, and Aspas all now chipped down, and Crashy's continuing to be a problem. And look how proactive they're getting in mid here as well. Optic wanting to push a little further. I love that as well. The smoke comes through just as there's no contact elsewhere. The swing through market again. They're all so tacked oh, up. Oh, Victor. Victor for two. He's playing further ahead. Victor and yay. The combination deadly and a flawless beginning for Optic. Get things started. But that chip damage at the start, Crashy's just did so much to them. Absolutely massive, and that is to consider that Optic have had a terrible pistol round success ratio this event, and actually previously versus Loud. I mean, it, the only two they won were on Fracture, which was just... Well, there's a reason... We write that, we write that there's off, There's a reason right? it's <laughs> not in this meter. Exactly, right? exactly. <laughs> they've, they've commanded that respect, but let's also talk about this map here, because this should be a, a, a limited buyback in for, for Loud. I don't think we're going to see too much. I'm seeing a frenzy in the Sheriff. If it starts going astray, we'll, we'll pay more mind, but... We've seen Optic on this map look really good, and actually, hold on, they're going for a little bit of a walkabout here. This is keeping my attention. There's already Aspas trying to be a nuisance, but handled well enough and not too much garnered off the back. So, again, historically, when we look at this map, what have we seen from Optic coming into this? And the same question, I guess, then goes to Loud. Well, the big change is, uh, obviously, very early on in this event, when Miles switched over to the Omen, it, it kind of set them up for, I mean, what we've just seen there, like a couple of small set pieces just to try and isolate a first blood, contest these orbs in particular. I think it might be a trend set in here. Again, a lot of fear around that one-way smoke outside A main. Storm around actually able to isolate Aspas, so it will take a little bit of a bite out of the execution. Oh, Marv could get caught, but he resets off the smoke perfectly. Very nice. Composed for optic and 
again, you, you look at Loud's expectations and wants from this round particularly. They're on that lighter purchase, so you're, you're hoping for the best and probably expecting the worst, really. And maybe, a, you know, maybe get a couple of kills, force them to reinvest. But we've also seen the other look to Optic to an extent in my mind as well, is that Ye got quelled. He got, you know, really pushed down a couple of times, counted on some of his aggression a little bit here and there. So I do want to see how they look going forward because I was really enjoying watching Loud play this earlier on. I got to, you know, catch back up on that, really spend some time going over it. And to me, Pancada was fantastic at being a, a threat and a nuisance. So again, that Marv Pancada battle going on the Omens, lovely concept in my mind. For now, still trying to make something happen here. One and it remaining. is going to be cleaned up. So comfortable stuff for Optic, not feeling too phased, and for Loud going through the motions. Interesting, I didn't, and we have seen a few examples of isolated instances, yes, but of Ye being played out of games, right? Just be, it's Correct. almost like the scene effect, right? It's like, avoid where he is. Yep. Don't don't go where don't we go know Ye's going to be. And again, all of that's very slow early round just to identify where the operator is or if there's any aggression. Yep. Obviously, remaining. I mean, the other big indicator is how reliant Optic are on, on kind of setting up Ye and these support systems, obviously, with Victor on other maps, but see if there's going to be any aggression here. It doesn't look as if actually any, any point of contest actually here from where Lauda set up a much more traditional default. They will be noted. So no dash here actually, even if it finds a kill. But oh, to it, and the swing's perfect. I Sassy there spike. just takes him out of the game very early and does get a little bit of damage himself off the back, but he'll take that. And again, such an early pick. One minute, 20 seconds still on the clock here for them to play with. But there is a double stack towards short, so that could be a conundrum to face. You can see Marv trying to fill the void. Pops himself up on short, surely to be cleared. Oh, this is good, though. If he finds the kill, he can TP away, and then Victor can pick up the slack. They're actually going to flash in here. Really like the engage on that, and Victor does deliver. It's had it gone down, and they're going to just Beautiful. peel away. That's, that's dreamy stuff. And now that early damage that came through towards Sassy actually becomes a problem. That's when your Spectres, your Marshals will actually do really well. Look at Aspas, look at Sassy. They are down lower on HP, so they've got to be a bit more cautious and be very careful with the next couple of steps because Optic have suddenly got a little bit more in the pocket now. I mean... Almost feels like an advantage. Aspas and Sassy down to 21 and 24 HP. Another oh, attack coming through huge. as well. This is huge. Great work from Aspas to stem the bleeding on hand. Flash Victor wants to get a little feisty with it. And yeah, it does. Lovely work from Victor. Pancada's still standing, though, and it is a 2v2. Left. So this should, should be contained. But they're just so willing to fight on this one. Oh, should come through now. Crash, he should be able to find himself an upgrade, though. If he doesn't find anything from heaven, he's perfect. Down. The timing's perfect. The timing's perfect from Aspas. An optic. That's a beginning for the boys there. They will be loving that. Converting the bonus. That round should not have been theirs. The early chip damage, everything teeing them up to close down the round. The sort of adjustment I was talking about. They're not afraid to get proactive. They're given 20 seconds to kind of formulate a plan. It comes through there and they do a ton of damage and find a kill on the back of that. Again, it's forcing Aspas to be a little more defensive on the entry. I mean, the, the timing here on the recon bolt as well is so important. To find that second kill from inside the smoke, it's just beautiful. Are we going to get FNS popping off as well? I mean, the guy's already been hailed enough as, you know, that in-game leader, the, the, the brain of I mean, the bunch. If he's fragging too, that's when uh, it gets scary. No, man, like. Like, we don't, you don't need to add that in. Okay, hey, it's early days. All right, we've got a best of five. We're going to just, you know, we're mellow. We're relaxed for now. We have a bit of a force up coming out. Uh, yeah, maybe not for soon. A little bit of something to it. But again, keeping it simple. We're going to go for that B piece already. You can see Optic respecting that enough to sit deep on Bow House, make them kind of work for their dinner. And information now does get revealed, but the gap already closed. So FNS going to try and find an angle. But the flash is very good, but it does catch the other Sadak as well. So for now, Optic still right holding for the back side. As Les is the only one to really connect so far for Loud. But they have at least got a step towards the site here. Backline's being addressed. Les, that's Enemy the big shot, though. Pankara makes this almost more possible. As the upgrade comes in, and Les has the spike not too far away. Can he find a singular fight, though? He needs to avoid that for one. Uses the turret to try and close into the site. Going to go for the plant. You've heard my fight too far away. He dips back in. Ultimate. He's going to pop that down. The madman. This is madness from left, 17 HP, and he is willing to throw us down seven seconds. They have to make the move within it. A couple more, and they have to make the play. What does he do with this? The spam comes in, and the reveal. It's dealt with well, and Optic play as a collective. There's no individual fights on that. They timed it nicely, good spacing, and they made sure that was converted. But you can see the danger in Loud in that round. Absolutely. It's almost desperation to try and convert that. The damage is done, but almost a round too late here. Mm. Still on a four-round deficit, but uh, again, 
I credited Marv last time we saw Optic play on Ascend, just his supportive utility, the smokes, the one way that comes down onto stairs, the paranoia towards lane, the timing is perfect. I mean, the only thing actually that, that, that kind of makes that more difficult is Sadak actually landing a perfect flash to force both players backside yes. off, off of these angles. I think you heard a little bit of it in the last round as well. Ye, of course, upgrading to that operator, so that will be something now that Loud has to deal with, keeping, I wouldn't say the back of the minds, when it's, when it's Ye, it has Standing to be the forefront. Ahead. So, less of the map will be freely accessible, but you can see the approach beginning towards that A site. Optic almost anticipating a set piece towards A here with FNS. He's got, he's got his utility basically invested to punish Aspas if he's looking to dash in either direction. And Marv actually playing close contact as well. Shadows traveling. It's interesting though, he's got himself a deep smoke here. Yeah, give himself a little bit of room to work with. But it is got a time limit on it, and you can see it literally tick over on the second. Yeah, he has to pull back, flash through. Does get caught by it, but he's going to at least pop a smoke down, so he's buying time here. The turret not going to be able to do anything with this just yet, less has to respect that this is great stall work coming out from Optic. Yeah, actually Victor popping the ult as well, so it's really going to take a lot of the clock away, actually, from Loud. A little bit of a bait TP as well, but you should hear the reset I'm on that down. nonetheless. Yeah, this is getting a little awkward here because there's four players from Optic now ready to greet this. Well, Loud just have to go back to basics, almost just the gun at the side, and Aspas going to show him how it's done, but he's taking a whole lot of damage. Sadak still stands and still finds work, but FNS deep tucked towards hell. They found Grashies. FNS on the site still doing work, and look who's remaining. Not Diablo himself in a 1v2. Pancada and Sassy, though. Comfortable enough for a plant here. He finds the kill, he's got the blade storm as well. So he does, but we have to wait to see if that's a possibility. He's got to break his wrist oh, if he wants it. Not gonna happen. Oh. Sassy well composed, and we have to kind of let's talk about that round because it felt like it changed hands a couple of times. On the first approach, it felt like, you know, Loud looking fine, and the stall work coming out from Optic was great. But then the site take actually worked out still for Loud. Sure, yeah, I mean it's a shame actually. Like I said, this setup here from FNS is designed it's literally designed to stop Aspas from finding a safe dash towards Dice or towards Jet. It does a ton of damage. They unfortunately can't close that kill before he's already found the entry, right? So it's a real shame. And again, actually, Victor even popping his ult there just preemptively to slow down the hit. It almost actually creates enough time for Loud to really reconsider their approach. But great composure from Loud as well. Being able to re-engage like that after having so much thrown in. Beautiful work. But Ye wants to get a little bit he's of a map already. in his control. Yeah, he's going walk about to the J. So of course it's going to work out well. Pankata going to have to just suck that one up. There's not much more to be said. But the spikes left at the top of the middle, and that worries me slightly. Marv now going to note more players looking towards middle. Aspas going to pop knives out as well. And they have to kind of reconvene to get that spike back. They have to take a little bit of time to do so, just in case that Ye was lingering around potentially, but obviously not. FNS is posted for this lockdown on B site. That's it on the other side. Sadak, one away from his ultimate. I'm not sure he'll be able to retrieve it here, but that could be key considering Ye doesn't have a weapon here. He'll be left with just a classic in hand. That'd be huge. Really. Trying to clear out towards Wine. Probably the right call there. Well, the conscious like just because Ye's showing such deep presence. You, you have to you have to clear meticulously. You, you've, you've lost a little bit of the, you know, the information play. Now already Aspas going to get further ahead. There's a lovely flash. The Porsche off the angle allows Sadak at least get a step forward. That's gorgeous work from Aspas towards Marv. Yay yeah, still stands! And yay! Delivering again and again. That's three already this round. Left. They've actually got the lockdown here as well, so they can fully reset. Yay's yeah, done the damage here. They have a man advantage and the lockdown for the retake. He still wants in. There it is. There's the investment. Look at the time. There's no, what can you do with this? 17 seconds. Plant's going to come in. Unless he's in such an annoying spot. Has to make a run for it. Gonna get himself out towards the backside of wine, just about. Look at like the pass. They have. Would like to get it halfway. FNS on guard duty. Going to get one. He's not stopping. Yeah, he is not stopping. <laughs> come hell or high water, El Diablo will always be dangerous. This guy pops the knives, gets hyper aggressive at the start, sits super deep on the side. How do you close him down when he's in that form? But he dials back perfectly. It's Literally balance. the perfect timing to pull away from this. And two crucial kills here. And like I said, FNS comes through with a lockdown at that point. 20 seconds left on the clock. It's it's borderline an unwinnable round for Loud. So let's okay, let's take a step back, right? We've had a couple of rounds, a couple of gun rounds coming in. We've seen the pistol. We, we've seen a, a little bit of a, a sample platter of what's potentially to come. Let's talk bigger picture because this is a weird buy. There is a hero rifle coming out and a couple of guardians, so we will pay mind to it. But I do also take stock of what we've seen so far because we're sitting at quite a commanding scoreline here. We are, but this this for me this last round was another example where they are, they are. optics big win condition, right? It's finding these free first bloods, untraded. It gives them time to set up. 
There you go. Go to plan B, plan C in some of these rounds. And that's where they've really excelled this, this event, honestly. Now, it looks like maybe Loud are exploring new options. We've seen some very site-centric hits, very dedicated towards A. Now we've got a little exploration towards middle, but it could be because this purchase is far from perfect. So, again, it looks like a little exploration. We saw this against Optic before, and it, it did work, but it did seem so Optic, of course, do have next layers to this. And already information aplenty. Not ideal, but already going to try and close in. Less happy to lead this as a fast fast with him. They've got a good surround on the side, but they're not yet quite breaking in to be able to get that spike down, and there's still three players potentially to clear. So, but it's a 5v3 there. Have the advantage here to play trades and crashes will be called upon. He's actually going to get picked out. It's an absolute Good. shutdown though. FNS and Ye looking comfortable. Give them just enough room. As Ye still backside the, the composure of every piece of this. They were knocking on the door. They, they were halfway in the site and Optic look unfazed by it. Almost like crashes falls and, and it's almost like that's the plan, right? We come through, we just lay one up to be taken and Victor's there once again with great utility. The flash coming through is perfectly timed for that swing from backside loud. I mean, there, if, if I was going to say, the timeout should be coming pretty soon because yeah. I'm not seeing anything tangible that they can hold on to here so what to apply we... to a different round, Lauren. Right, so what have we seen work against Optic on this map? Because they haven't been flawless in the past. Let's roll our minds back to any of the games we've seen either at this event or leading into this event. What have we seen work against them? Obviously, the notable one would be Ye being controlled here, but we haven't just seen you know, Ye doing those sort of things. That was a, an, one example of a very good round, of course. But bigger picture, how can you address what, what's going on here? Because, again, it looks like Loud don't have answers yet. No, and I think if we look back to the previous, <laughs> the second half was what does basically decided the scent, right? That was sure. uh, obviously Optic coming out with an advantage in the first. and. I won't say it took Loud a little longer to get online in the in the first half, particularly in their attack. It, it, it felt a little flat, I'll be honest. It was actually defense where they were to dig their heels in, play really, really solid sight holds, and, and that was what Optic struggled with. Here, the concern for me is that I haven't really seen Loud come into this with a with a breath of fresh air. They, they haven't really come and applied anything new to this just yet. Um, and again, already we're seeing the right the right movements from Optic to, to kind of take the bite out of Aspas on some of these hits. Yep. Again, the adjustment of utility on the side of FNS and the way in which they're playing around, burning up this 10 seconds and then it comes through with a flash of paranoia or something. Optic are ready to re-aggress at exactly the right time. I mean, even just on the scoreboard alone, FNS 10 to 2, I mean, that's 10 to 2. This is almost beyond the point. And again, Crash is a 1 to 3, but it's again, keep in mind the amount of damage <laughs> yeah. you've done. Exactly, he has been present every round. On the other side, I don't think anyone's above 5 kills yet. They, they have been just not quite finding what they need. Again, the economy has been fantastic now for Optic. They're starting to really build a bank in the lovely that's high beautiful. flash. Look at that, Victor sets himself up for success, but it's marred by his side. Who's going to get the two kills? Aspas and Sadek, and a little switch up of pace here coming off the back of that tactical timeout. They're going to just turn the screws on him. They're taking the fight right back to them. And Optic demonstrated they're happy to go hunting on the defensive side. Yes, it's marved, they lose, but it's two kills on the back of it. And it's Aspas again. Mm. The tip of the spear fall out. Yeah, now going to be in a position once this round slows down a little bit, he can post up and should be rewarded with a kill. Is he going to hold back towards mid? Is Loud going to drift his three towards B main? But again, they've got bodies in the right place. Once uh, once Loud creeps through here, and it's going to have to be slow, they have to pass Yay and this utility. But I still love the fact that it's FNS who's filling the void on short yeah. here, right? He's keeping so much information, allowing Yay to be a little bit freer to be able to kind of get there. He's potentially two there, I think. Sussy and maybe less, both noted. Left. So that's enough to pull everyone over anyway. FNS can still hold mid in case there's a late rotation or something happens. But again, look at the time being bought here. The clock is an opponent for Optic in this, and they are just playing it perfectly. Shot goes astray for Ye, but it's fine. He's still holding position. Pressure. It's going to be the crossfire that holds. Yes. And it's no so beautiful. resilient. Optic are no playing one. a near on flawless game here, Mike. And this is something I did not expect. I thought Loud could be disruptive, be a, a nuisance, be a problem, be explosive, bring that Brazilian style. And right now, they're being folded. Just, again, they come through, like I said, they lose Marv, but it's two kills. And it's two massive kills for them. And the thing is, FNS has his utility cover in mid, he's covering short, then he has the nano swarms basically on Ye's contact. This is the late round contingency here for Optic. As soon as he finds contact in B main, even if Ye misses that shot, mm. two nano swarms are going to buy so much time, so much time for that rotation to come through. Spike retreat. I'm waiting for the answer because 7 1 is condemning. 
And I do want to talk about what this implies now for the greater you know, the run of things now when we look at that best of five. Because I think this map was a bit of a swing map. A lot of people having confidence here in loud on this map, looking like a firm, you know, I guess pillar of their game plan. And if this is the form that Optic are coming out with, that changes a little bit here. However, it's not over yet. A double walk on it. That's true. Oh, God, uh, that's a tee up. That's going to be fine. Finds Victor, wants another. He's so ready for a moss. That's well enough here, but FNS can hear this cross. But he knows there's a trap on the other side. He's so aware of this man. He's got two. Oh, two. How do you get two off of that? Oh, he's just absolutely unleashing today. That's two big kills. That's going to keep this round somewhat feeling safer. As already Crashy's closing in. Going to take the spike away from them. And it's just Aspas left in a 1v2, and it's not happening. It's A1. This scoreline is just running away from them. They're getting absolutely shut out here. I mean, like, I came back to what I was saying earlier. There's nothing tangible that Loud can apply from any of these rounds. The Optic haven't got an answer for it. Again, we've got a total switch up here yeah. of the way in which they're looking to hold on to short. Yes, a little bit of a fumble from Victor with the flash, but Marv good for the trade. They never, ever feel as if it, it's slipping through their fingers. This is, this is scary. Terrifying. one scary. This is terrifying. This is, you know, <laughs> the beast that makes the noise in the night. You know, this, is the, this is the big worry now because I... Well, just to put it in perspective, round 10 <laughs> last time, it was 5-5. Sure. Five, five. Yeah, a bit different, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit different. A little bit different. Man, what have they been coming up with in the lab? Optic have been working. And do you know what? This I, I, People question you know, the North, North American work ethic when it comes to esports, especially. They critique it time and time again. But these boys have been putting in hours. You can see it so clearly. So credit to them already for this. I think they had a really early reality check at this event. Yeah. And it's actually paid dividends for them. That's a huge wake-up call. For now, though, it looks like Lau trying to make something happen on short. But again, look at the read. It is unfathomably good. How are they reading this so well? Optic are so in their heads. And Loud have to back away. You, you, what are you going to do? You're, you're stuck in a halfway choice. You even get, you might get detained if you're not careful. They do get out in time. But again, the time purchased. We're down to 40 seconds now. They read the whole game plan. They're going to hear all of it. It was a lot of utility burnt up. But right place, right time. And I'm surprised they swung a player over off the back of that. They might start doing that now as a lot more utility comes in. FNS will be surprised, but he's still left. fine. He seems to be good for at least one at this point. It's already on the side. Flash comes in. Victor goes through. Does his best impression. Oh, I thought he had two there. Not to be. They keep their lives. Aspas still standing. Player tucked towards hell. His mom gets himself out. Has a little look. Does he see anything for now? And look at who's waiting. Yay. Has a couple of options. Takes one. Ten seconds left. Player with him and the 2v2 sprays in. It ain't clean for the swing from Crash. He's trying to capitalize on the time, but that's... A little uncomfortable and loud, stabilized for just a second. It gets really chaotic there. It's almost like Marv actually has the get out of jail free card yeah. there. I'm not sure if he was looking to cancel his TP, maybe in timing with Ye in heaven. Unfortunately, it crumbles there. Again, it doesn't feel comfortable. Nope. That's not something that I think Loud can come back to, because we're just going to see another uh, another switch up on the defense here. Again, this could be the one where, yeah, he's going to dig a little well, deeper mid in mid work. because there's been space to find. And Optic have actually towed the line. They haven't really we had dipped one their round. toes yet. We exactly. had one round of Ye going exploring, but now this could be the next look at it, right? Because he's got the supporting act there. He's got FNS by his side. You're going to have that swing player on short. And FNS tries to walk mid. Walking mid. Nah, not going to happen. He had so much faith in Ye, but the angle was just a little bit too deep. So at this point, he has to fall back. He's left down on minimal HP. And yeah, he gets left a little bit to his own devices. That's key, though. If FNS is the first to fall in this sort of game plan, oh, uh, but that's it. Yeah, he's backfield this. He's on the other side. And oh. look at them. They're ready to look post up. No way. The underhand. A little gift sent from the gods. Spike Victor and Marv went out on the extremity. They've read the play so well. The spike gets dropped. And Marv still sticking around. Backs away to buy time. Oh, God, but yeah, he's already leading as well. Yeah, he's flanking them already. Yeah, he's backfilling this one. Another underhand goes in. Marv is just playing the clock right now, buying more and more time for Ye to close in step by step. He's even going to commit to wine. In. He's committing to wine on this. Sadak, Aspas have to clear this because look who's lurking. It's going to be Ye from the Spike back lines. Down. And he's still finding one shots. And he's still being a problem. As only one stands and it's Aspas. And he does not feel safe. He has players just about everywhere. He would have to go hero mode if he wants to save this round. It's just beautiful left. to watch. And now Aspas, like I said, in an unwinnable position here. The 1v3, not even going to find the first hurdle. Yay, will close it out. What a round from Optic.
again, they find Atsi Matt pressure Brown on the other side of mid, and they still decide to re-explore it. And look at the reward. Wow. I mean, they are literally reading loud down to a T. And the timing of this re-aggress as well. Oh, Spike down. Unbelievable. This is this is really something to watch. Optic literally have Spike their finger on the pulse right now. Uh, so loud can find remaining. nothing across the map. No, it's shut out. Doors are closed. Go on, boys. It's yeah, it's getting late. 9-2, this is map one. We will discuss what this means for the bigger picture if it closes out in this similar fashion. There's always a chance for Laotio to pull that scoreline back in, but this half has not shown us any indication of that. However, I like this fast mid adjustment. It looks like FNS is ready again. He's in the right place, right time for it, and they just don't expect it. He's still dealt with Sadak. He turned away from Aspas, but now the lockdown is going to come in, and yeah, he's going to over overpush, and he does go down. Great trade from Aspas, who is the only one trying to do this right now for Loud. Putting in a great performance. Performance. Three of them still alive. It's Crashies are marved on the other side. HP's a little low, but they have the numbers. One goes in. Oh, the snap from Crashies! Someone check on that man's wrists. A sassy now. The spike has to do it all on his own. And the information play coming in. Sassy though, he's closing in. A nice amount of HP to work with, but he's still got a chance in this. They have no idea where he's at right now. They've set up the crossfire. Does it hold? Sassy walks in. He's found an optic. Are looking formidable. A 10 to half is exceedingly impressive. Marv again, again from the back lines, a carbon copy here for this B-site retake. The one way on lane, crashes goes huge to find his first two, but the paranoia comes through and it doesn't allow a 1v1 to present itself from Sassy. It's so huge, so huge. I need Loud to wake up. I need them to get a fire burning underneath them. Desk, what do you think they need? I can't wait to hear about what you guys have to say, what they need, but it just feels like every time we're at Reykjavik, Ice and Doug, there is something in the air for North American teams. There's a bit of magic here for them. Yeah, there are a lot of things going very well for Optics. You start off right at the beginning, they won the pistol. They struggled in pistols against Loud in their last dance. This is already a big change. And then if you take a little bit of a, a trip down history lane with Optics particularly, they don't lose rematches, right? They didn't <laughs> lose their rematch to the guard. Yeah. They didn't lose their rematch to Zersha, and now this. Yeah, and I also have to point out FNS is just fragging. This guy is a monster. And I always like to say this, when your IGL is fragging, that means he has the pulse on the game. He knows what is going on. The amount of reads <laughs> yeah. that you see this guy make are unbelievable. The preemptive lockdowns, there's so much going well, and I think it all starts from this guy on your screen. I completely agree. I mean, you saw it in the game against DRX. You saw it in the game yesterday against Zeta Division 2. When FNS has his finger on the pulse, he can just take over. And it doesn't mean necessarily he does it, but you have these little set plays where it just works gorgeously. Yeah, I mean, this round, for example, there's a drone following up when they clear that with a flash. So gorgeous. Just wipe the floor with it, and then FNS comes in with the perfect timing as well to clean up the round. The following round as well, I mean, a couple rounds later, Ye has his knives, and he's updrafting, gets put in that position because Marv is flashing early. They have a bunch of, I mean, obviously it pops off, but there's these moments where they're just going for this early early aggression, and it's working out in dividends. I, I mean, you said this when we're watching the game, Bala, but there are things that Optic are bringing to the table we haven't seen before. Sure. Yeah, there's a couple of mid flashes that Victor's throwing that are new. I mean, there's a lot, I think, uh, especially just the way that FNS is playing with the setup. They won one round on attack last time, but they barely need any more than that. I think this is going to be doable <laughs> for them. Uh, well, they, they will need a, just a couple, right? Just I a think. couple there, uh, SciShow. Uh, let's toss this back to Pansy and Hypoc and see how this game is going to be closed out. It's the ultimate question, isn't it? Does it go with this kind of landslide that we've seen already from Optic? Or can there be that spark to ignite loud? I want to see more resilience. I think most of us have actually enjoyed a very perfect approach to the defensive side for Optic. I think as just a fan of the game, you'll love that half. But I want resilience. I want a little bit more magic from that loud side. I want them to wake up. This will be the time to do it. Flip this pistol round back. Said they did win both pistols last time, but conceding the first half. Got to right their wrongs now. Aspas looking to get a little feisty, actually, towards mid. I mean, Marv's waiting for this. I think in it's position to greet any sort of aggression, maybe on the back of this B main contact to see if anybody looks to backfill Optic. It's just how long do you hold that? Because it's not just him there, right? You've got Victor as well, kind of leading that A side. So it is just this three-man play. Oh. So it's a lot to pull over. Victor over here with a flash as well. Yeah. So we'll see what the actual game plan is. Oh, you can see Pankata just... Pankata, do you know what's on the other side? That's beautiful from Pankata. Cover going Huge up. kill. 
massive kill because it looked like the rotation was the intention as they're going to be leaning around towards that tree side. Four of the players down for Optic, working their way through. And Loud shutting the door on this A1. None of what they're trying to sell. Aspas going to keep them busy, going to fall away to a safer angle. As Optic, what are you up to, Marv? You're getting real dangerous on this. And this is a shutdown. Loud waking up. And that is what we need to see. More standing, a good read, and no over peaks, no over pushes, no falling foul to little traps. That is what the doctor ordered. And say composure here on the side of Loud. You can see Aspas considering. I mean, you throw the sheriff into the pistol round, you're, you're looking to make that work early on, but. Again, Marv just looking to bait a little bit with the TP here. It's unfortunate. But nonetheless, loud. With the underwater watch party. <laughs> but they get the pistol. Great start here, but mountains to climb to come back into this. Not underselling that. <laughs> By any means, it is a long road back in, but a capable side. You're only just seeing them now. You've missed a hell of a lot, but they are damn good at what they do loud, so give them a moment. Let's watch how it looks. And Carly can get first contact, and also just going to claim the scalp of Ye. Marv oh, actually does. Still at back again. That's a little bit of a fate here, but yeah, it sets it up perfectly. That's it. That's lovely. Cleaning up on the flawless in that second round here on the second half. Get a couple of bits and pieces, maybe. Nothing too much to write home about. And now we go into the real round. Now we did have the conversion of the bonus before, so this is something they've got to be eyeing up themselves as well. And Josh, even though it actually loud started with four unanswered rounds in the second half of the previous showing, can they convert here? Three Spectres, a Marshal and a Bulldog. Doesn't look as if uh, maybe a little bit of aggression towards mid here from Shaw. Just looking to post up Aspas with that Marshal. And if he comes online here, now could string together. For me, it's, it's Pancada as well. Uh, watching their oh. last game, I think he was instrumental in it. Absolutely. Absolutely loved how he looked in that. So I want to see a bit more of it. It looks like he's starting to warm into this as well. So good enough for me. That's a tick of the box. So that's trying to get uh, good start. No Porsche back a little bit as well. Last time, actually, Pancada went 12-4 and four on their defensive half. So he was instrumental. I mean, this guy is truly an anchor on that A site as well. He's, put, he's got a lot of weight on your shoulders, a lot of that intuition, holding that A long push. You've got to feel out the timing, not overextend, but not to be too passive. Call the rotation when you need it is a tough job to do. So for him, it looks like he's going to pump himself into wine this time. As we look at Optic going through the motions of this default. Just exploring, see if they can deal with any of the early aggression, run through some utility, try and draw some out, and pull that rotation away from where they want. So it looks like the A site will be their eventual goal and then nothing changes, so we will have to see what Pancada can do. Tannic on the other side as well, but time being bought for rotation. A little bit of exploration towards middle here from Ye. Perfect flash oh. coming through from Tannic as well. Oh, that's that nice. Burst. He double dips. 30 yeah. seconds left. And seeing nothing is big, Mike. They see nothing there, so now they can maybe lean right back towards B or at least give the call of support because Ye, he's over pushing this one. Has a little look towards CT and Les is now down, so it does seem as though they've broken through on the side. They pulled the rotation just perfectly. Marv going to catch this as well. Sadak, do you check it? Nah, not a shot. Free fire almost from Marv there. <laughs> what do you do on the way back in? Back up's got a bulldog, I guess. The rest, not so equipped. Uh, okay. Ooh. No, it's fine, apparently. The uh, Marshal is good to go. My bad. Three, three, I'll never now. doubt it. And it, it does look a little possible. It's this mid fight to me, right? Marv looks so on the money for it. He seems super aware of this possibility. And how does Pancada approach it? Obviously, none the wiser to what's noise. behind him. And yeah, it's going to be the reveal. Beautiful work from Marv. His patience is paying off. Composed, calm, but they have slipped through. So now FNS just going to feel the burden, the brunt of it all. He's gone down now. Marv's trying to sweat bullets. He's going to get back to sight. And oh, Sati! He's got the time on the defuse. They just get across the line, doing right back to Optic what they did to them. I mean, that's such a key engagement there between Pancada and Marv. I mean, it defines the round ultimately. As soon as Marv shows his hand, they know that they can isolate this 2v1 on site. And they sped up quickly for it. Oh, yeah. As soon, it was the green light as soon as that engagement comes through. I mean, you can see Aspas almost considering taking this engagement right here from Switch. Oh, Sassy oh, actually oh. comes off with a perfect time. Oh, man, the Brazilian fans. God, you got to love to see it. It was the same as AO. I just want that noise pumped in here. Honestly, I'll take it. Sadak this time. He's going to be the one to deal with a whole lot if he swings too wide. He's fine. It's three. 
Oh, it just slices them apart. And Optic gonna lose much of the potential of this round. Maybe if they wanted to get a little bit more away from Loud, not gonna be the case. FNS, yeah, you've threaded the needle a little bit, but... Have I told you a story about the one before with FNS I'm all ears. <laughs> I am all ears. <laughs> Well, it's crazy. It starts off, he like mm. threads through tree, right? And then he goes up towards kind of, you know, the rafters does on the other side. Does he get Aspas first? Well, you think he does, but actually, it's Pancada. I'm lying. It, it is Aspas, of course. And then he gets the operator, kills him. And then it just, you know, it, oh, oh. it wasn't this round, of course. Um, it's it was actually one, uh, in a different game. But yeah. it is 10 to 6. It's allowed doing exactly what it needed. That, was, that round was kind of dealt with very early on with that 3K that came out. All possibility just nullified. So now we look at the, the real well. deal, right? I'm having deja vu. <laughs> There's four unanswered rounds here to start yep. the second half. Optic had to get a pump the brakes now, call a timeout. Uh, rightfully so. We're expecting a little bit of a pace change, maybe an adjustment here, lean heavier on an all in sight execute. Because again, it's almost feeling pretty similar to the first half. There's, there's not an awful a lot of tangible information here that Optic have to act upon. I mean, they're not comfortably finding these first engagements. Sure. And then actually following on from that, not comfortably winning them either. So yeah, whether or not, uh, I mean, Ye actually still opting to ride through with the rifles. I mean, the, the, the economy's not there with how this has gone so far to, to support an operator. Ultimate's just about coming online now. FNS two off the lockdown, Victor two away, and Ye two off as well. One of the crashes is actually gonna be the one to open things up with the Hunter's Fury here. To wait and see, but definitely expecting a, a big change coming out of this time out here. We have to just ask the question: Do Optic have the chops to be able to identify problems on the fly like this? This, this is this is a tough, you know, question to be asked. There's there's not an easy answer to much of this. And for Loud, it's still resilience. As much as yes, we have seen four on the trot. They're still a couple rounds behind Optic here. So it's again the moment of can can Loud actually close this out now? Can they pull that scoreline right back or even? We have to wait and see because so far it does look like they are certainly on course for it. Nice reveal. Gonna find two of them there. Note the position early on. And slow things down as well. Mm. I mean, I'd counter that with where Optic have looked best is having to problem solve, <laughs> troubleshooting. Again, FNS the, the backbone of that sort of equation, to be honest with you, but yeah. we've got to see it here. I mean, this would be a, a fumble to allow another buy round conceded here, and it will bring Loud within touch of distance in my eyes. Down. Absolutely right, less. It's going to be you and Pancada to try and deal with what's coming your way. Quickly dealt with on the first, Jay. To work his way in towards the site. And now you've got to look at the second string to this. The people behind Ye. Does he go? Oh. Ye actually found Zadak there. I thought they might have noticed him slipping through, or at least kept it in mind, but it wasn't the case at all. And he's still being a nuisance. Two up towards the rafters, and Aspas trying to clear through, but you can see the nuisance this man is, and Ye won't stop. Just ripping them apart. Three. And now two, Pancada and Aspas still alive, but where are they and what can they do with this? One by tree, one towards rafters. Operated to hand, and they need more than this. They need that springboard suppressed again. So few options. It looks like they're on the verge of giving this one up at this point. Yeah, he's still prowling around, gets found. Can there be an answer back in? No yes, way. Pancada's found another. And no oh, way. Pancada, that is the loud you've got to be worried about. That's the team that are never done in these scenarios. The fuse comes in, it's seven for loud. And they are right back in the game, Mike. That's a tough blow. I almost feel like Optic had that again. They're so cautious, so hesitant here. Once this post plant slows down a little bit. Yeah. And Jaeger is huge for them as well. There's so much damage and he's actually holding back this entire heaven push solo. Yes, yes. That was like, what, two, three players at one point. Pancada again, man. He's, he's a nasty little player, Pancada. Well, they burnt, the, thing, the crazy thing is they have the power, and I think it's actually burnt up so early there. Mm. So that's literally just coming back in completely dry. Like nothing yep. to work off. There's no dash. No, it was there's no cloud the one pick on Ye, exactly. and that was it. And it's just like, oh, okay, so we're going to fall to pieces. And now they've broken the money enough that Optic will be on very little this round. So you've got to imagine it's eight. So again, that scoreboard just closing in and closing in. And Aspas closing down. Ye tries to get aggressive, keeps his life. Three HP, gets out of there. Just wants to play his life at this point. Give him a second to breathe. As Optic were desperate to close down on it, but it wasn't going to be allowed. A bit of a swing on short. That's information, unless doesn't overstay his welcome. This is why that previous round was so important. And this is the one where the blade storms burnt up. 
This is really actually going to throw Optic's ultimate cycle off kill to hit. Conceding that buy round now. Sassy slips away. Aspas still posted up with the operator, so not really feeling any pressure just yet. Uh, Other than that. <laughs> Other than that. Well, defeated uh, drop uh, tick. Uh, you're not meant to be doing this right now. And 3 HP on Aspas. This is really concerning now. It is, but it's still an operator. And we know what the lore is. Doesn't matter the HP, you can still do as much damage as possible, but it is a 2v2. Problem is, Tommy could find the kill. Tommy really could. Tommy becomes the third man of the team. So maybe it is a 3v2. And maybe it doesn't matter because Marv is holding that cross and ass bass. Oh, it's not <laughs> even Tommy. Swarm. It's not even Tommy who does it. Optic, zero right in that round to pull that off. No. Uh, and even even yes, uh, I mean, finding the kill with the operator on crashes, it's, it's noted then. It's almost like the later that comes, the better for Loud in that sure. scenario. Almost allowing them past forcing the plant and then being in a position to, to really stabilize on the way back in. But, I mean, actually, considering the run Loud have got, look at the finances behind this. Like I said, it does throw Optics' old cycle off kilter a little bit. They do still have victors to work with. Blade Storm, Hunter's Fury, and the TP on the other side for Pancada. Can Optic find map point now? I have a spike. A little trade out of info. Picked up. Waiting patiently on the other side. Does have support, so he's not alone in this. Flash. No intention behind it, but Sadak trying to bait out the look towards short in case there was that follow-up. Key thing here as well, it's Victor that they know on the other side, right? So they're almost anticipating potentially an A hit, but you don't want to over-rotate. If that null command gets popped, you must want to be giving it up. Especially considering you have the Hunter's Fury, you can play from distance here and completely mitigate that risk. But, as he is all the way over towards B right now, I mean, he's got the timing to find it, but... Whether or not actually... I was say, yeah, the rotation comes through. I was considering if Optic were to try and plant the seed, sell a fake here, but how and are going to get sent through? Did you catch Shadow? No. no. Shadow's fine. That's a huge issue. He can just spam this cross if he wants to. At least a bit of damage as well towards Victor. Not a great deal, but it's Pancada. It's Aspas, who are the back line, who are unrelenting and unmoving. Look at them, again, Crashies just out swings and takes down Aspas. Sassy still holds it good together as Crashies now left. In a very tough scenario, 13 seconds, and you've got a player behind you as well. Crashies knows that this is not going to be comfortable. Hunter's Fury is going to come out. Seven seconds now. He's got to try and play the game. He can tank at least one hit if he has to. But the door Ooh. breaks. He, he takes down Les, but I think he's out of time on this. It's done for. It's run down. The clock was his biggest opponent in the end. Stay taught as a boasting. Sassy by just enough time there with the Hunter's Fury, but. Again, like you said, it's just noting that Sadak isn't caught with this paranoia. I'm not sure what the, the exact intention is, whether or not the angle is just to avoid and maybe catch towards heaven, because it's kind of diagonal across the generator. Let's try to switch up there. Remaining. And actually, it, it does punish Optic. 11 to 8. Yes, it's traded, but look what Ye did last time, holding that heaven retake. One round closer again. As soon as Optic get one on the board, there is an answer back by Loud, correcting any mistakes, and maybe a pace change on this. A draw towards Take identifying this push out on main, potentially. And this play, if they can speed it up on short, would actually be very valuable. They'll be caught in a really uncomfortable position. It looks like Ye wants to try and do this, but it's going to be Aspas on the other side. He slipped through, they have no idea! Now they do! Aspas unleashes Fury, Back takes down, down Victor. A. Static denies Marv, and it's on Ye, who somehow done the same. He spots one, I think he saw another, and his crash is in combination to find the two on the site. But with the spike left loose, they still need to readdress this. Get that back into process, back into hand, because Loud aren't far away. FNS has got to make a move here. Yes, he's low HP, but he has to. Make something happen from this position. Stale, oh. <laughs> Too good, Aspas. Now they do at least get a spike back. You'd see the intention on the swing from Aspas, but he couldn't quite get there in time to crest the corner. But on the double dip, he does. Crashes goes down, and now it's just spike. one. Yay. And you bring your team back into this attack on the spike, and it's a shot in the back. There's nothing more to be said. It's nine for Loud. And they are back in this game, round by round. They are finding ways through. Look at that run. What was it Josh said? I think Josh said Optic got one round on their attack last time. Yes. 
Yes, he did. I'm having deja vu again. Yep. Yep. I'm looking at the money as well, like, <laughs> um, Oof. Surely not. Surely not, right? You're starting to get a little worried in your optic, surely. At, the, at I this was worried point, three rounds ago. Yeah, I know you were, but <laughs> you got to have a little bit of that hopium in the game. But now you found no real solution that can be applied across the board, right? You had like a weird kind of win uh, with an eco, and it was, you know, again, it's not, you can't repeat it. So for now, no formula found, no answers given. And for Loud, it is step by step. And we said it was a marathon to come back into this game, right? A mountain to climb. And they put the climbing boots on, so making good on the journey. Here, Marv gets a little bit deeper towards oh, Mill, but it looks like he's already been seen yet. Ooh, it's all good for it though. Marv can at least punish Aspas. Shadows a little pressure towards this B side, and this could be a big, quick hit just off the back of that pick alone. This could be the best chance that they've got it around in a while, but time being bought already. You can see just at the back of the side, Les is still solid enough. The spray comes in. Sassy wants to help out desperately, but there's a problem. <gasps> Marv, he's behind him. No, he's going to just unleash yet. Yeah, find Sassy, swings in, finds no. another. Marv digs deep when they need it, but it's still a 2v2, and we've seen these have problems. And Carter still stands, who is the demon right now. He's going to catch his audio cue, though. Marv's going to be expecting him. You've got to look towards CT as well. Keep that. Build in the back of your mind. Who gets this shot? It. It's Marv. What a moment for this man. As Sadak now tries to find his way back in. And crashes comes around on it. Optic make it to 12. And it's off the back of Marv in this round. What a play. The reposition. Pankata still considers the possibility. Oh, yeah. But that reposition 100%. from Marv is absolutely massive. The first hit, again, creates so much pressure. Guess Unreal. the god timing on Sassy as well. So slippery. <laughs> he is. Remaining, remaining. Just cannot catch a grip on him. Wow. Beautiful. Okay. They came into what, what was that? Two guardians and a spectre. So yeah, that's not was... a round optics should feel comfortable about. No. And it requires Marv finding four kills from nothing. It somehow slipping mid perfectly, Wait, right? He's caught, like... by, he's caught by the alarm bot. Yeah. He tried to TP over the alarm it... bot. It's actually placed a little deeper towards steps, but... It looked like Aspas had his number, but yep. again, the Guardian just good enough with Marv, dealt with him well, and that just unlocked every possibility. I, I would say, though, we still have to once again boil this back. Now, Loud have been good enough to close this scoreline in. Now, I would say both these teams could probably convert around off of, like, one player's brilliance. I think that's a fair assessment of their capability here. However, I do want to keep my eye on the money, because I'm pretty sure that's going to be coming to question for Loud here as well, and what a bad time for that to become a problem. I mean, it is considering... The string of rounds they were, they couldn't really stabilize, bank any of that yeah. throughout. Optic were constantly doing damage. It was coming down to 1v1s, 2v1s. So lots of repurchases being forced through. But Optic finally, after an eternity, find themselves here on map point on Ascent. And look at the look at the buy for Loud Spectre, Stinger. Three rifles, light armor. That's what I'm worried about. Sad hack. Does have the ultimate. Less does have his as well. I kind of still with that TP. An already a tense game. This is only map one. This is the best of five. Strap yourself in. This is going to be a good day for Valor, and we've got some great, great stuff coming up. I can only imagine what else is going to happen here. Is already Optic and Loud putting on a beautiful performance for us. Yay. First man forward, happy to try and take the attention, but look at where the intention is over towards A. Spike into the pocket of FNS. And this once again puts pressure on the likes of Pancada. It's been good for it. He's got Aspas on this side as well this round. Again, noting, yeah, that's a big indicator. It's almost planting doubt here, but the Aldron on the other side are going to force Pancada back. Should now be a much bigger indicator to Loud of whereabouts Optic are positioned. Are they going to get... No, I was wondering if they were going to get proactive on short to try and maybe deal with Ye potentially? Because I, I just saw the rotation of Sadak, but it doesn't seem the case. Is Ye's walking mid. I think they've, they've pulled they the feel rotation. as if they pulled the rotation. They, yeah, they, 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 they know They have. It. I mean, Sadak did fall over with them. So, yeah, he needs to be careful to not give away too much here because he's such a thorn in the side. And this is just adding this paranoia to Loud. They're getting worried. The map's feeling smaller and smaller. It's all going to close in on them as Optic now recalibrate. They look towards short as a way to go, and it's Aspas waiting. Only a Spectre, though. Has to make it work somehow. Spins in fast, tries to do some damage. Does get a bit of damage on Ye as well. Just going to try and fire it down, but it's crashing towards Pancada. The site should be open. Yes, there's a backfill of Sadak, but again, it's only a Stinger. This is not ideal at all. Loud going to have to fall away from this. Three of them 
having to reconsider how they get back in on this site because right now Optic are firmly in charge. Lockdown comes through and actually going to pull out the Hunter's Fury here. So I see Marv on the back of it, going to find a kill. Yeah, and now it's Les and Sassy. Map one in the balance already, Marv. Gonna spot them on the cross unless actually finds Marv. Now they've got to know the crashes was down below, but can they do anything to deal with him? Can they dig him out of this spot? FNS has been phenomenal this game, but he needs a little bit of it here. Again, trying to just get this one done. Victor delivers it. He delivers the second as well. It's 13 to nine. Optic, get map one. Now's the time to do it, isn't it? Eight seconds and we start this one up. Map two, if you're just tuning in, Optic converted map one after a blistering start. Eventually. Precarious second <laughs> half. Now, things did close in, but obviously Loud did bow down in that one, but it's their chance to come back into this now and prove their diligence on this map in bind. It's not going to be easy, though. Optic already looking fired up. We've seen Mart hit new highs. FNS leading from those front lines. And Loud, I want to see Aspas find that form. I want to see Pancada back on it. I want to see everyone hit that level. They certainly can. Just a five-man lean towards B side. It's only two members for Optic here. FNS. And crashes. We'll feel a little bit of this pressure if Loud decides to follow through. Down. Yeah, just waiting on this wall to drop. But no rotation come through from Optic just yet. And not a lot of utility to really add. Yeah, the crunch is going to come through. Yeah, and the delivery on one. Crashes was able to find Aspas, so that's going to lose a little bit of the burst. Sadak, <gasps> he only saw one. He didn't know that Victor had threaded through, but the trade out. Les still finds the shot. FNS on the site needs to do well here. Does damage, but that is not going to really convert into a kill. Les still is alive, so it is that additional player. Plan. If, there's a, if there's a gun up, man, it still counts. Molly going to try and clear at least a little of the site, force them to unfavorable scenarios and try and tee up Ye here. That's lovely for Ye. Needs two more, though. As the side, this still holds this down. Yay again! This guy, the golden gun in his hand, 14 HP. Sats, he's got it! Ooh, close first round. And if that's anything to go by, we've got an absolute heater in this great, one. Great, great usage of the molly, though. Just to set Ye up, force them into these uncomfortable positions in backside. And like you said, with that golden gun, Ye still makes this interesting. See, FNS with the triple swing there. I mean, it's a miracle he even does that much damage. I thought it was just cooked. <laughs> I like this from Loud. I want them to kind of bound back into this so we get a nice close series. But another key indicator early on here, Optic very Direct comfortable you. to get proactive. Oh, that's Again, TP. as soon as that yep. wall drops, they know. They have that window of opportunity to really punish Loud or at least do some damage on the way in. Yep. So I was a little worried there wasn't a rotation. That was that was my big worry yeah. then. There was kind of slow, but that, that TP take was great. Oh, yeah. Very nice. A little bit of a look at things to come. Yeah, he posted really deep, Atsy. He's going to pull Optic in this early rotation line. Yeah, and he's allowed them to now stack four players over towards A. A lot of pressure on this man. Take flight. And they can get a little over aggressive almost. Oh, you get off! Victor unleashes, goes straight forward, finds Sassy. They're just baffled by this loud, I'm certain of it, because FNS waiting as well. This is still so dangerous. Victor's got the upgrade. And FNS venomous with it as well, Down finding Sadak. And now Pancada, what's happened here? He's got the spike to hand, but he's got no teammates, and Yay is still patrolling. Pancada, if he falls back and goes to Ye, if he aggresses forward, he's got two players to find. What are the options here? Blocking the undesirable vision. scenario. It's going to take some real brilliance to do something with this. TP is available if he wants to try it, but yay, I mean, he'll still see that. Grashy's the first test. He's going to dip. He's going to make him work for his dinner. And Carter has to try and do something. Spots out too. Still left. keeps his HP, though. He's trying to bait Crashy's back in. He wants it. He's not going to get it. Wow. Optic, turn it right back around. 1-1 one, one now. What a thrifty round. Again, Just like I said, <laughs> immediately, yeah, he drifts down short. Huge. There's, there's so much space to work with there, and it opens up the possibility to actually be proactive once again. The, the conditioning of that alone now. You can't just do those all-in leans. Well, you have to now keep that in mind that maybe Ye's going to go walkabouts. And the key thing here is they have no utility plan control, right? So it's, yeah. it's drawing Pancada deeper and deeper, further away Take from the Take him executives. away from it, yeah, absolutely. And actually, that increases the pressure on Aspas, Sassy, and Sadhak to find these opening engagements. That's, that's, that's the way that round went down is going to be something to really worry about for Loud. They can recover just fine, but it's certainly going to cause that little bit of paranoia, that little worry. Actually, the second leg to this is it's one of these key engagements we always talk about, and it was the showers pressure, right? This sure. is such a pivotal part of the map here, particularly for the attackers. Oh, <laughs> 
still getting away with it. I don't know how he's holding this down. I thought he was dead to right, so at least one of them with the best utility deal. And second, still stands. Actually gets himself out of danger. And speaking of danger, really sassy now, the only one with the upgraded weapon. So he'd be the only one to really be able to find an say, easier shot. A little bit of a misread here, unless actually, no, FNS is just swapping out for the heal, you're right. Yeah, he will actually find less, so. I will drop the wall. <laughs> yeah, and leave Loud thing a little bit exposed here. Mm. Oh, not being given much. Sassy catches a nice bit of timing on Victor there just to readdress and look back towards showers. Again, needs a lot more, ahead. Two of them trying to pry this away. 30 seconds left. There's no obviously weapons in hand. hand. Yeah, the control is beautiful. Optic comfortable on that round. Kept composure. Almost over aggressed towards shower, but fell back nicely towards sight. Really nice balance there. Like I said, there's less that gets found. I, I think blind was with a bit of spam. I said their only real safety net there is the Viper Wall. But again, nobody on the other side of it in Lamps to even entertain the possibility of throwing that one away on the side of Optic. It's a really, really well controlled. Well, I'll come back into this. I mean, full by other than Sassy down on the Light Shield due to the Sheriff in the previous, but Hunter's Fury available here. Let's see for Optic, the Showstopper offline. Pretty early for Victor, so. That's huge to come into round four with the showstopper. Very early. Could be a real curveball here, actually. Uh, commands addressing. You you can't just leave it on its own, and the rotation's quick for Victor. Crashy's shorter peak. Not oh, really got any contact yet. But you can see the flight. trade out here. So I'm sort of unable to deny. And that's going to reveal at least two players then. Did nothing off the drone as well. So we know it's the three, two, split, and there's the send. Doesn't find what he wants at all, sends it right back in. Hunter's Fury gonna get popped as well. Victor tries to do the dance and, well, ah, he can't keep up the footwork, not quick enough. The Sassy's gonna find him, and that's the player advantage they were dreaming of. FNS now dealt with, oh, dealing with maybe, should I say, as Les and Pancada go down, still controlling on long, 30 HP, but it's a spike scene for the breakthrough on the woods of sight. And he's gotta turn around and face the music. Sadak's right there, and now Ye, what is this position? Is he on the attacking side at this point? No, but he is the one who's down and out. Spike now recovered, and it's Marv. And it's the TP, surely. Yeah, they're through. And Marv, what are your options 30 seconds now? seconds left. He's going to try and catch him. you got to run, boys, run, because Marv is hot on your heels. Oh, what a shot, Aspas. That's what you need. Loud thriving in that chaos now. As you said, like, ooh, he just misses the plant, actually. That would have been Seekers online for him. Oh, nice. If he would have found it. But damage done. And you can see actually the knock-on effect here to the economy of Loud. Again, FNS <laughs> lining them up. And so much damage done to Sassy, but the pinch from Hooker, perfectly timed. They're able to trade this out effectively. And Ye, yeah, I mean, he's put in a rough spot there to challenge. I think he's desperate to try and keep control of the spike, but a chance there if he does reset, him and Marv can set up for that 2v2. How much Loud have to invest to try and find this early showers control? <laughs> uh, and again, the Trailblazer on the back of it. So <laughs> much burn up. This is a big win for Optic. Oh, for the early exchange, but Crashies could be the equal. Oh, he still checks it so diligently. I thought Pancada was going to find that, but look at the aggress down short. The switch up so much shown towards shower, and now they try and make the play towards short. They're going to draw the attention back in. The wall's still there. Going to keep them safe for the slip back, posting up yay for now. Optic are so good for finding this space. So much pressure, they have to re-clear so Crossing considered now. This is really lovely work, but it's all early round. It could all still fall apart. You can do everything right, and somehow Loud still can do just the right back things to you. Now, there's the utility. Seekers come in, they won't be able to find as much. They have to try and find a new way forward to avoid all that utility in play, but they're going to know FNS. He's still standing, and he's still fighting. Down, effective code. trades for Optic, as Ye on the back lines is still as effective as ever. And now just two, Sassy and Aspas, and again, these players are just taking player fights, standing. spray control, not enough to be able to adjust, but it's still Sassy. Gets straight from Sharon Ye. They've got to know he's around, but where? 30 seconds left. Can Sassy find him? The rotation's coming in. Ye's heard that. I think he's seen that too. And the cross, it's being watched. Ye, beautiful presence here. And Optic keep two alive and command the tempo on this defensive side. And now it have to be a little more frugal in the early round here. They have nothing by the time they're actually pushing onto site. And it's not even the area they've invested all this utility early on. They reset, they drop. Yay. Sorry, I just got that in the replay there. What was that adjustment?
But like I said, they, they have nothing to really rely on. I mean, the drones dealt with so early. The ATP's away, so it, it basically mitigates that altogether. Mm -hmm. Loud, uh, these hits are just, I'll be honest, extremely flat. Because it's relying on somebody just going in, finding an entry, and then snowballing from there. And Optic are in the right place at the right time. They have they usually have four. Because of what Crashies and Ye are able to do in the early round, they always have bodies in the right place. Uh, I don't know if they saw Sadak there, but they're pushing through this. Sadak has to peel away. Oh, I think they just missed him as well. But a look at the space once again. It's going to pull this rotation of Ye potentially because yep. they know there's nothing set up outside eight. He's bringing that Total Force right back around. He's still got his traps there as well. They're not really falling for much. They can maybe post up Marv if they're a little worried about that re-aggress. Okay, seen less, so charges. might cause pause for thought here. Still got smokes to invest, though, so that's, again, time being bought and a conundrum presented. You walk this, you try and get through this. No Hot way. flash, potentially. It didn't work. He yeah. positioned himself so well to not get blinded. Dips back even further. And he's got support coming in on the back lines. Don't forget the Victor was with him. Oh, the Victor just a little too late to try and it. save him. But you're right, he could. And now Optic are going to make their way around, but Loud have a moment, a chance. It's going to be so slim, so fragile. As here, it looks like Victor's made a mill. Oh, thank God. He's absolutely made a mess of that one, and Loud are going to capitalize. FNS, you've got to fight this one out. He has to just accept that his fate was sealed. Look at the HP. There's a chance, and you're right. Five, H five seconds for the flash. It was less than five HP on Pancada. Is now Sadak low as well, almost caught on the cross. And Crashies the flashes back up, sends it. He's blind as anything crashes. His turn to save the day here, because Loud were on the precipice of turning that. Comes up huge with the Red Bull clutch here for Optic after I felt like that one was going to slip through their fingers with yeah. so many successes early on here in this round. Again, creating so much space by being, being willing to be so proactive. Mm. Okay, let's, let's, again, I like to take stock at this point, kind of hit the brakes a little bit. I want to see Loud come back in with uh, an address towards that early utility exchange, potentially how they look towards showers control, how they're going to deal with this almost... I I'd say Optic are winning out in that early battle. Massively. I want to see the adjustment in that for it's, now. It's not even close for me, Lauren. Nope. I'm with you. Okay. And like I said, the fact that... that ooh, okay, Victor that's actually, different. Yeah. But it's, right, it's, a bit, it's another obstacle here in terms of this war of attrition for showers control early on. Look at this aggression down on long as well. Yeah. It's always one of these sites, or one of the sides is always being addressed. Be it Ye going and walkabouts being at the showers control. Optic, uh, I oh, think, boy, yeah, they've definitely boy. seen it. Okay, but this, if anything, encourages Ye to stick around, right? He's going to post up on this. He knows that there's some idea of players here. That's it, lovely delivery for Ye. Falls away. Doesn't need to outstay his welcome. But while all this happens, they've still locked down showers. They've not given up short control. Optic are putting up a perfect wall of defense here. They are playing a good game right Spike's now. Dropped. This time around, a little more utility to work with the drone to try and pave the way. And GFNS just about finds out for Sadak. Last second adjustment. Orbital Strike used preemptively here on short just to slow it down, but. Crashes is still going to be able to find something here. He's got to slip away now. But they still can't get past Yay. He's going to hold this cross. If they try and dip out through Hooker, that's going to be such an issue. That's how you do it with pace, with vigor. With that momentum, and now though, they've isolated Ye. They've got him on his own here. But he's going to get back again! Two. It's a two for Fight one discount! Down, and Ye doesn't need any help! It's 10 seconds now, and Sassy. 10 seconds left. Wrap this up, man. You ain't going to get this in seven seconds. FNS waiting, just sprays in on it, and Optic starting to build in this half already. Oh, man. This is. I, I think Loud needs a timeout, man. They need to stop this somehow. I can't believe they line up for the collapse. <laughs> that is absolutely heartbreaking. They like said Ye is just given so much space to work with. And now even, again, the awareness is there. They know after that kill onto Pancada, he's still going to be somewhere, tucked in. And Ye makes him pay for that one. But again, it's, it's desperation. They find the kill onto Marv. They have to just try and stick the plant there. Deploying drone. Pace change? Maybe in this round. Test the waters a little. Run it down. Yeah, frenzies, sheriffs. But again, you think just purely utility alone, there's so much in that showers control, the crossfire for the post pump, or even just post pump positioning for loud is brutal here. They almost have to overstep, overreach towards CT, and it looks like they're going to try and wrap a little through lamps. And the awareness from Ye, he's already considering this. The 
timing. Oh, he just off to the side. Great work from Aspas. Value alone from that is massive. Hector does find less in the meantime, but any damage is good here. Pain Child doesn't quite find it. The spike will go Fight down. Planted. Loud thriving right now. See, Aspas still tucked in here. They're going to be able to bail him out. No, FNS finds the first. That's good for the trade. Absolutely, especially with Victor on 5 HP. And the spacing not good enough for Marv to be able to find the swing. Divide goes up and he gets ahead of it. Sprays in, finds it. Oh, Marv! Digging his heels in on this round, but he still needs to deal with Pancada. He wants halfway. He's going to get halfway. Oh, he's not stopping. He's not stopping! Pancada has to sit back and watch as Marv rips the round away from them. And that was a chance. <laughs> that was a little bit of hope, and they stamp it out. The most marved esque round yeah, <laughs> conclusion yeah. there. Again, no hesitation whatsoever. Sticks that through. There's the blanket, the safety blanket there of the smoke to hold up. Well, there's the time I wanted coming in now. Yeah, yeah. It has to come in. I, I don't know what the answers are. Again, I'm nowhere near these players, but there has to be an addressment of something. Again, I love this round. Anti optic play a little deeper. They're almost relying on. Playing plant denial initially sure. with the snake bites. I mean, Victor, uh, with the pressure coming through to him, he can't combine the paint shell with that. Not even sure if it would have resulted in a kill, but Optic, they know the rounds to push. They know the rounds to sit a little deeper. They're feeling so comfortable right now on the defense. They are. You stop playing songs that absolutely slap and get distracted. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is, this is going to put Loud to the test here. And the coaches, it's time to talk, right? It's time to really start trying to come up with a plan of approach. And for me, the fact is, though, that Optic have come out with such a solid start that even if Loud are able to address the initial problem, there could be layers to this, there could be adaptation, there could be so much more behind it now. Two, two big things I'm looking for here. Loud, if they continue to sit in these defaults, Pancada has to be a little more diligent, be a little more careful. And the other thing is, if they're going to resort ad seed more towards a, a, a traditional site execute, they've got to start saving this utility. I mean, yeah. we've talked about this. They need to actually resort to a more, you know, drilled, that, that choreographed kind of execute here. But the problem is, there's so many variations to the side of Optic. How do they isolate a kill there? This has to be like textbook execute to, to even find it. They have nothing to really rely on other than finding a first blood, creating the space themselves. And now, yeah, with the operator back on board. Crash is going to do, as said, the protocol list. Run through it. And oh, Pancada on the pre five. Yeah, spammed out on that. I don't think you can even see it. Getting the Seekers going as well. FNS going to dip away from the Sily, and yeah, going to be called cool to really try and hold this defense together because FNS is actually done well enough to be able to handle the front line of this and keep at least three of them standing against three. There it is. Yay, yeah, still stands. Connects towards Sassy and expects the swing from Huka. No one's there. We know that, but obviously he doesn't. Still has to be super diligent. And when that wall drops, what does he see? Less tucks into the corner. He's still got support here. Problem being, if they take this TP, Marv's already set up for it. Yeah. So and they have to almost commit here. The rotation. If they double swing this, it doesn't matter. Yay, always will hold. And this guy is just, he knows it. He felt the pressure. He's not going to risk it. He's going to wait for that rotation to come back in. Tempers his own aggression for once as Pancada now. Tries to find a way around, navigate something here. Two towards CT and that paranoia himself building. Taking that back. Work his way in. The free fire on it. Beautiful work. Optic. They are looking like the full package again. This defensive side from them. I, I, look, again, I don't want to get too ahead of myself because map one looked real similar, didn't it? And then, you know, the switch up of the events. However, at 7-2, to two, we have to give great deals of credit to how Optic are standing at the moment. I mean, this is big as well because Optic concede the first blood. Uh, and, and actually, it was such a standout statistic last time in their previous series. I mean, uh, they only flipped four out of 16 4v5s. So to be that comfortable there, giving up the first, then resetting a little deeper. Uh, again, here, it, it's the site they have three members on. Yeah. FNS delivers with the second follow-up. And actually, Victor good for the crunch once again to find a kill elsewhere. So that's really key for me, because Optic do more yeah, often than walking. not rely on it. He has to over-aggress on this. He's holding them down! Yay, Unchained at the moment. Just going to be hunting these players out. And this is against potentially like a four spy, maybe even an eco. That's so risky to go walking with an operator like that. Ridiculous. Again, another little switch up. Optic are happy to dip their toes time and time again and test this default of Loud. Crashes once again again. Yep, spots a pixel out of place. Out. Like you said, this, this, is, this is the reset. What's next on the protocol list for Optic? FNS there in time. Invest the utility. 
no quick pressure can come up from long now. But this time they do at least have a little bit of presence towards Huka. We didn't see that before for Loud, so this could be a nice element towards this. And they don't know about FNS, at least positionally yet. Normally tucked up on long. And out they go. Quick pressure on the side. FNS was... Oh, what? Where was the cool ass pass? Okay, doesn't matter. It's fine. He's got this all himself. Finds Jay as well as the follow-up. And Crashies gets the reveal. It doesn't matter. Seconds Loud left. explode on the side. Finally looking deadly. Marv still stand. And there's always going to be a chance if this man's alive. But... What are you meant to do with this? Sorry for the showstopper out as well, so the plant can Spike come through planted. comfortably. A 2v3 now for Victor and Marv. Sassy posted up in front of Hooker. He gets spotted on the jumpy though. Oh, he found him! Here. Unreal from Victor. And now look at what they've got weaponry. They've got a Stinger and a Spectre. It's so subpar, and Marv clearing meticulously towards Long, trying to make his way back in towards his site. He adjusted, dipped away from Hooker itself, and now they're clearing through. They have to clear these close angles. They're trying to bring these SMGs to the best place. The timing's good. They fight together, and now just one Aspas who got this started made it a problem. Still being a problem. Showstoppers up, baby. Let's go. He gets it on the trade. No way. Victor still lands that, but the showstopper finds him regardless. <laughs> How did he even hit that shot? There was a second in it. Uh, just beautiful work from Marv once again, though. This smoke completely baits Loud into set up, expecting him to come out of hooker. Uh, this is fantastic as well, by the way. Nasty. Nasty work. Sassy's the one posted up with a Bulldog, if I'm not mistaken, as well. So he's the, the strongest weapon oh. remaining on the side of Loud, but... Aspas finds the Red Bull clutch. Beautiful. And Loud, their third round. A critical one as well for Loud. Needed that. And Optic um, respond um, by rushing B long. Um, hey, FNS, they're, they're not on B, so. Um, no be flank ready. control, by the way. Zero. Zero. <laughs> Yay's yeah, already over here. Sassy's Hulk out. Back. And Sassy is going to be greeted by something I don't think he expects, and maybe. He's got a little bit of consideration towards this. And if you're allowed, you're, you're asking the question, where the hell are they? And there's the Seeker's going to be coming out. There's a swing off the back, and Sassy still holds. Takes down Marv, that's huge. Yay, overwhelmed. Still going to grab one with him and take him down to the grave. But it's a favorable fight this time for Loud, holding numbers. And Crashy's going to get out of this flash in time. There's still three of them looking for it. They are not comfortable. They're going to pop the ult to try and deal with it. It's going to be an execution from above. No, Sassy again, handling every single problem that Optic are throwing at them here. And that's lovely work from Loud. Fine. Finally, stamping a little authority in this game. And Sassy, the only one really drawn to check the flank there because he has the Hunter's Fury. It's the last thing there that Loud want to rely on after finding a comfortable plant. But thank God he does. Uh, I mean, here, look at how much clutter there is on his screen. They Who still can still find that kill? Beautiful. Again, uh, I mean, is this a round that Loud can replicate? That's a lot of pressure on that man's shoulders if they have yeah. to. Again, Sassy, what a, what a leader in that regard. Just, you know, as said, holding nerve, watching that flank. Optic can hit the timeout on the final round here, maybe just discussing with what their money scenario is, what to come up with, maybe expand on the plan a little more. That there, though, is a perfect example to what I'm talking about, the variety of this aggression. The rounds where Loud decide to stack up, Optic are just absolutely farming. In terms of space, uh, just yeah. how much early information. They can stall a little bit if it's FNS with the poison ore potentially to slow things down on short. Like I said, that actually <laughs> really highlights just how important that engagement is as Sassy drifts away from it. Whether or not, now they're actually now going to lean heavier towards stacking up here. Again, that threat has to be a constant consideration for them. And they've ju I, I, I've got to say, like you look at that string kind of mid first half of rounds, five back to back, it was very, very clear cut for Optic. But again, loud, these, the, these players are so capable of turning a scoreline one more round and, you know, it's, it's I mean, a good half for me. I'm okay with that. It feels like an absolute miracle. With the way Optic have played this once again on the defensive side, if Loud can scrape together a 7-5. That is huge in my eyes. Okay, early ult goes in. That's FNS going to try and shut down the approach at least towards short. And yeah, again, he's found so much room. They're allowing this to happen. Marv's here too. But they're not unaware of it. You can see the players are looking this way. Aspas was already looking this way. I think, excuse me, Pancada was already no looking this way. Hunter's Fury going to go out, send it through. Try and clear FNS. Maybe a tag would be great. Now for it. Yay, though. Whoa, oh, yay. Big a. players make big plays in big games. And he just did three yeah. kills back to back. And look at the buy they had coming into this. Huge impact alone. Zadak, you got nothing to do with it. Aspas now as well, left all to his own.
a 1v5 of the back of Ye being such a nuisance, such a threat in all occasion. And now what do you do with this? You got to try and dismantle them. I don't know how you're going to make it around, but Aspas will give it a damn good try. Marv is closing in, and of course, look who's waiting in the back lines. The devil himself, yay, shuts down this half. Eight to four, I mean. I thought this could have been closed right Shooting back sides. in. Like, I thought that was going to be, you know, that 7-5, hey, game on, but 8-4 feels different. I mean, you talk about it in the previous round. There's example two. What goes wrong when Optic are able to actually convert <laughs> this space early on? And it's on the back so of the good. Hunter's Fury. No, yeah. he's testing the diligence of Loud here. Is somebody watching Sassy's back? Is somebody covering that? Well, they're going to have a rude awakening on the second half if they're certainly not, because 8-4, it's competitive, but it's not completely clear-cut. Guys on the desk, your thoughts? Thank you very much uh, there, guys. I'm so glad Hypop brought up the whole point uh, of their defense and how they're taking space there. And Saisho, uh, sometimes I'm not quite sure if Optic are playing defense or attack. They're just pushing. <laughs> they love disrespecting their opponents when their opponents don't have a chamber. They will just push and push and push. And it feels like part of that timing is based off the fact that Aspas is not really covering sand. He's not using that boom bot up there. I think there were, what, three or four different instances in which they were just able to expose the gaps that Loud had in their attack have. You saw it in showers, you saw it down sand. The last round really just kind of puts it all together. If they're able to exploit that, that makes for a long half. And it's really interesting that we see Ye actually put himself in that position as the chamber as well on the mm -hmm. flank, because that's exactly what you said, Josh, at the beginning of this. They are disrespecting the crap out of the yeah. fact that their comp, Loud's comp, is not theirs, the one that Optic is playing. Sure. They are saying, hey, this doesn't work at all. There's so many instances, look at this, where Crash is just peeking long, he's walking down sand by himself, and that gives him the information to have everybody here for when the execute happens. What I find amazing as well is this is not based on any VOD review prep, right? This is not based on them looking it at Optic be. and saying, yeah. I've identified a hole. This is them thinking about the composition, intuitively understanding how the meta works right now, and finding and exploiting those holes individually just based off the info they get. I think Optic are the best team in the world on Bind right now, and they're showcasing it. How disastrous will it be if uh, Loud aren't able to find any answers into the second half? That could be, I mean, that could be the end of the series. <laughs> That's what we're looking at right now. It could be 2-0, and then we're going to a map three that they're, I mean, the pressure is on at that point. It's certainly going to test their mental like they've never been tested before. These guys have not had a huge amount of experience on the stage. That's been optics to me. Uh, on Ascent, they did hit back in the second half. They found a response. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing if they can do that here. Pansy and Hypok as well. Yeah, I think for me, this is a bit of a litmus test of what Optic really yeah, is yeah. right now, because as the desk kind of alluded to, right? This is a little bit of a new environment. I mean, it's, uh, it's a great point from Josh. This is based on no prep, right? Yeah. So like I said, this is just the, the checklist in place for Optic. This is this is kind of their ethos, right? Trust the process. Like they're starting blank canvas. Don't care what you're bringing. We're bringing our game plan and we're executing. We kind of heard that in the interviews as well. I think it was FNS who was saying it, like, we're not going to go too hard into the ante here. We're just going to try and play our approach, our game. And you're seeing it tangibly on your That's screens now. Really there is a buffer here in this round. We don't need to be full on board the Optic train because four rounds is enough to work with. We need to see Loud finally play their own game, though, because they are being dictated to. They haven't been able to be in control of that pace just yet. But now they get the defensive side to start that up. Here in the second half at 8-4, to four, Optic, of course, leading the series thus far, but we're in best of five territory in the grand finals here in Reykjavik. And again, Loud, what do you have for us this time? Good, though, just related back to that domestic performance. Loud do lean a little attack-sided here, so ready to come in with a disadvantage. Puts Optic definitely in the driving seat here. Less is actually, uh, I mean, it's burning up a lot of toxin here, but nobody on the side of Optic actually here to pressure on the backside on the cooldown. Already sassy, actually. Gonna hit this early rotation. As Optic do drift back this way, and it's the drone actually to come through. It's just slipped through. Unnoted, I think, as well. There's a window, though, where he can make anything of this. And wait, Aspas to the side of the head, he just dipped back out from shower. I didn't think he was really within killing distance, but apparently so. Finds it for almost three, left. and they can't really dig him out of this position. Optic, this is not good. This is not looking nice at all. Is Aspas going to find three this round? Perfect work for him. Playing that nuisance player from shower to absolute perfection. Swings in, can't quite get it, but Sassy's by his side. And that's more than enough work. That's them basically giving them a gateway back in this game. 
Exactly. So if they can convert the second, I mean, fumbled the second round on the first sure. half, but they can find it here. Definitely puts them right back in this. Great work from Aspas. Really nice. I think See as well, with these smokes here, oh. it just uh, allows Loud to just wait for the moment yeah. to capitalize on Aspas finding contact. Really well done. You'd want maybe a nice little momentum builder for him. Get him in the game early. A quiet map one. Yeah. Again, not really through his own fault, but... Pop, flash. There it is. Didn't really swing much on that. Victor was pretty much ready for it. One down. Less comfortable. And the only upgrade here will be with Marv. Everyone else just on the classics. Playing pretty close to this. They're like, they do need to be careful. And you'll take that absolutely every day of the week. And caution thrown to the wind for Crash. He's going to try and find one. Less quickly quells that problem and looks back. But this is good for Optic. Still finding a couple of favorable moments. And if Ye still stands and he's got that gun to hand, there's always a danger. Not right now. Sassy says no. Not this round. We're going to keep this in check. Three of them can play alive. They don't lose too much. The reinvestments will be fine. That's key as well, bringing across that free weapon buffer to the bonus round. See how it actually sits here, whether or not it's just going to be pistols to round this purchase out. A judge actually in the hands of Les, so eyes go towards him. No surprises to see him early on towards hookup. Optic, no real progress in terms of ultimates either coming into this, so that's the only other side. Aspas with the was it? Victor managed to get his showstopper online in round four in the first half, and Aspas not too far off the pace, to be honest with you. No, nope, it's only keeping Early confirmation of attendance, at least towards that B long side. It. Giving a little idea. Jump peak reveals a whole lot more, though. So you got to be cautious now. We're going to post up left with that judge. That's, uh, that could be nasty to try and handle. What's the dog doing? I was waiting for one of us to say it. Yeah. But actually, judge. on the other side of this, with a little bit of space towards Hooker here, less actually in the, <laughs> I guess, the unexpected position with the judge. And difficult here if Optic wide swing this. He can be cleared here, and uh, again, could be difficult for him to really close out a kill. I think Optic are feeling as if there's kind of a bait here. This is a there's trap that they're walking into. I don't think they have utility to clear it too easily. Yeah, the molly, but again, he could still swing on that. It's not something that's going to completely nullify him from this round. Now, obviously, he doesn't know it yet. He's going to have to hard clear. And he's going to just take the buckshot to the chest. And it's, oh, it's labored, but it works. Let's all take it at this point. Sassy with a mad spray. And look at the numbers advantage. Optic being torn limb from limb. Crash is still alive, though. But less is going to be a problem. They've got to try and clear him now. Flash for it. Has to turn. You can see the longevity of the flash coming into play. 13 HP. Less looks dead. And the spike's back in hand. But again, Aspas still working. Still putting in so much damage. And a quick TP take for Crashies. It better be quick. 10 seconds. 10 seconds got the Seekers left. off the plant. Could be key for him here. Especially if Loud split up. So yeah, anticipating <laughs> one plant. But Crashies, nice little adjustment there. Real smart. Oh, he's got the judge. Oh, he swapped out to the wrong weapon. Oh, no, I thought he had a rifle. It's a disaster. He's got to play close contact now. Well, he's got a flash to play with, and that's about it. Let's see what you can do with this, because this changes the entire dynamic. One flash sends it, doesn't get anything for it. They're both in towards lamps right now. Ten more seconds till he gets the other one up, but Tankada spots it. Nice work. A whole different round if he had the rifle, but for Loud, that is a breath of fresh air that got so dangerous but again they are showing this capability time and time again i think you're absolutely right the weapon swap doesn't come through there actually got an opportunity for crashies to play that a little differently and ultimately relies on on loud completely dropping the ball here in the retake hold them to somewhere grinning ear to ear seeing that clip one enemy remaining a great recovery from Loud, though, because initially, I, I mean, it looked as if FNS and Crashies are able to make that work. The, the pressure comes through to Les at the right time, and he's the one actually controlling the spike as well. It's a great decision making on the side of Crashies there to really go forward, force the issue, and find that engagement. And this purchase coming in for Optic, looking shoddy, but. And no ultimates as well. Side 
And at this point, I'm just... I, I want to see if they've got something in mind. And, well, I mean, I guess charging at them works with a frenzy. Uh, it takes you, takes you some space. That's brilliant, though. With the poison orb, they actually played anti-flash on the fountain, waited for the orb tap to come through. They try and flash. And Victor's there to try and double sat you up to close the distance. So, unfortunately, they're not to find a kill, but... Nice intention. Yeah, forced Sadak right back towards elbow. A little bit of pressure shown towards B. Actually pulls a rotation early as well. And they're a little ahead of this, but I guess it depends on when they decide to pick up the pace, switching to next They must have got a Guardian. This, and we saw what Marv can do with that. <laughs> yeah. So, again, Ass Pass is here. It's a trade. Spike okay, Marv a. keeps this a little bit feisty as Ye is going to try and late clear towards Shower. Not a bad plan, but Ass Pass reads it so perfectly. Really diligent work from him. There's that rifle removed in the hands of Victor. Oh, Aspas. Aspas. This guy's a demon. Absolutely keep them in check. And all that hope gets removed here for Optic. A chance in this round. And it ain't looking likely now. Aspas brings that scoreline all even. We're at 8-8. Eight, eight. Just like that, Louder back in this. In the second half, once again, four unanswered rounds here. These guys are so good. Yeah. The capability to turn games like this around. It's, it's not easy. I mean, it's terrifying. If Aspas comes online, we've seen what this guy can do. Yeah. It could be a real win condition for that. I mean, he is a real win condition yes. for Loud. He's on 22 to 12 right now. Yep. There's three They're players the on Loud that are actually still below 10 kills, yep. which just shows actually the overperformance almost from Aspas. And we saw actually, I mean, Doug was alluding to it earlier, right? There was that performance on Icebox from Les where, I mean, Sassy even in an interview said, yeah, he hard carried us that game. If there's characters in this roster that can literally solo carry a map, mm. it's a fairly scary prospect. It certainly is. I mean, Optic do have yay. So, <laughs> I... I'll counter that with actually Optic have... Marved. Yeah, they have like Victor. four, potentially five actually with yeah, that map. One with performance FNS. for FNS, yeah. yep. It's okay, at least it's not like that other game, the Simple Center. I mean, it's, it's different, I promise you. Don't know what you talk about. Never heard of that. Nope. 8-8. Eight, eight. Anyway. Uh, I'm not much of a golfer. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. Yay with the operator, though, could be something of influence here. Finally going to get that at least on board this time. But again, Aspas, this guy's impact alone has been sublime. 22 to 12 at this point, considering that to turn back a scoreline, too. With the operator here, I'm curious that's to see if Optic want to slow things down even more here. Then work a pick, maybe. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Victor on a judge. Actually, the complete opposite to that. He's probably going to try and speed up here. Yeah. Polar opposites almost, right? But let's see. Close flash. And Victor's away. So, going to take early control over towards Elbow. And you can see actually on the other side, there's a, there's a lot of players there. So Victor going to take a lot of space. Obviously, he doesn't know how much work he's done. But this is somewhat of a stack on the other side as well. You're going to have the early rotation coming in too. If Sadak's sitting towards CT, but it's going to be yay. I mean, this guy's playing pretty aggressive. Tip of the spear with the Operator. Certainly no backline player. Happy to lead. Smokes are about to die though, and have they just, I feel like they're just sending Ye to try and deal with Aspas, but there are other players lingering around. Can they have to tap the spike, pull out this gravity well? They're waiting for Marv to actually come and pinch showers here. Yeah, yeah he knows that he's got his pinned in the corner. The flash is turned. good, but Marv actually, yeah, doesn't swing on it. No, Aspas is fine as well, gets to swing back into that. Didn't get flashed by any means to that degree, so he was able to address that push. This feels tailor-made to try and deal with a man. It showers, and they absolutely crunch on Optic. This is beautiful from Loud. Stunning play, Victor would have to go hero mode. It ain't gonna happen. Aspas is still the beast who will not be tamed. He will not be moved. That whole piece in my mind was trying to set up to isolate him, and he just did not care for it. Absolutely. What a terror this man is. And again, this this hit See almost ya. relies on Loud slipping up, giving away the opening engagement, losing that first blood. That's actually crazy. Uh, again, whether or not That's slowing it down is going to work here for Optic. Because they're on to site pretty early, right? It's the Stimbeak and the double satchel. Again, they, now Aspas can play a little out of showers. You want to play? Let's play. Oh, Ooh, that was really uncomfortable. The timing, Pancada. Unfortunate, but just a little bit bizarre to go wandering. Big win, though. I feel like that's the, the easiest first blood the Optic have been able to find. Did they get the rifle off it? I don't know if they did. I felt like they were close enough, but maybe just dipped back in. Yeah, he spotted a player, but it's Aspas waiting again, this guy. Can you clear him? Yay, yeah, seems all too away. Yay! 
absolutely unreal, but it is traded out quickly. Sassy. Oh Sonic, my god. Sonic, they're all blind. He has a shot. He chased him off. Oh, oh it's him. What is going on? What was that optic on the feed into the TP? What? Absolutely. Like to the slaughter. Absolutely desperate. Sadhak literally eats his own flash. <laughs> Everyone's just stood there, hands up in the air, like, well. That happened. Oh dear, and they do say desperation really isn't attractive, and I mean, what on earth was that round? Guys, just try him. <laughs> Let's swing them together, guys. Oh, yeah, that yeah. one will get the fans on the feet. That's, that's one for the fans right there. Loud one, double digits. Eight though. is ten. They, uh, Optic have given us nothing here. They can't deal with Ashpass. It feels like this entire half now, after that tactical timeout, has brought them back in to try and find the formula to remove this man, but there's new looks, new positions, new ways that he wants to find problems dealt with, finally. They could hit the brakes for a second if they wanted. Now they've finally taken that man out of the game who's been a huge determinant factor. However, they decide not to. They want to keep this pressure up. So it looks like the spike plant is on the docket. And yay. Making himself become the gatekeeper over towards. They have to convert this post plant. <sighs> Get the spike plant first. Yeah, let's take it forever there. here. They're so cautious. Hesitant almost. Trying to work out that utility, potentially try and draw whatever they can <laughs> out of it. Again too. <laughs> it's not pretty for him. You can see the amount of pressure they're having to work against. His seekers come in and now the re engage from Loud. They could try and tell the tempo a little bit. It's spray. It doesn't quite find as much as they'd want. And the TV gets taken. They've had enough of that. No Wait. way, do they make it back? Can they no make it back before shot. the Viper's bit drops? It's Surely not. Oh, but the Stim will help! <laughs> oh, do they make oh, it back in time? And Divine left. Intervention called upon. Do they? No, oh, they drops. just missed by a second. And there's still players nearby. Mark finds Sassy. The send on an optic. How are you turning this one back in your favor? That looks so far out of touch. There's now less in the 1v5, and he wasn't even near that site at this point. That's a mad round by Optic. <laughs> the key five standing as well. Look at the funds. It's going to be massive they in terms to. of the finances. Less going to come through. Labored on the first maft. Good for the trade. The fourth in the round for him. And Optic finally answer back. Who am I kidding? My knees A are window kill of that. chance <laughs> again, man. Six but one on the half, Lauren. Yeah, just do that again, though. Can we just do that again? Yeah, sure. Cool, fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, you just hit that shot on Aspas, and so then we can spiral the rest of the round. Lovely. Big fan. That was. <sighs> This is what it's about, man. Nine to ten. What a crazy round. And Loud probably just baffled off seeing that. Like, all right, man. Fair the crazy enough. thing is, Loud still leaves somebody. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Crashes is posted up in showers there. I don't know if he's actually pressuring at all, but Loud still considered the possibility. Absolutely. I mean, as soon as Left feels no pressure comes through Hooker there, they can kind of read into it. Talk about repeatable success, Mike, and we have to kind of step it back a little here. Optic have not given me this overall good look yet. I want to see more consistency. That's going to help it. Yay, cracking open the round with that first pick. And now that calls him for potential rotations, maybe getting over aggressive. But look at Crash, he's waiting on the other side. If they go walkabouts, he'll meet them with a smile. Same can be said towards middle. Less wants a little bit of information, potentially. It's awkward here. Pankada posted up. Trailblazer used, so... Whether or not Optic are going to be able to sniff this out. Mm. Actually, elsewhere, Marv will fall to less. But Again, no follow-up on that kill. No, yeah, I'm looking to see if Sussy leans back towards B. Pop flashed in, catch Pankata at all. Able to drag Crashies with him, but a quick trade. Aspas, no man's land. Yay is coming alive here. That's the yay that Optic need. Hunter's Fury comes down. Can FNS get the plan? Yes, but can he keep his life? No, not for now at all. And now Victor and yay, what do you have for us in this post plan? Sassy and Les trying to clear those close corners. They have no idea where these players reside. Victor's tucked in so deep as well and has the paint shell. So he's the late round piece here for Optic. Can Ye buy him the time necessary? Yeah, he's got to be the one to get that contact, right? He's got to, be to. to keep them He's got the TP attention. as well still. Oh, you're right. Ye can be a problem. Speaking of, time is the problem. Victor going to catch his cross potentially. I'm waiting for the swing to come down. They're already towards the site. They're trying to address the factor of Shao is going to just eat that paint one shell. Let's has to move. He doesn't get away in time, and Sassy, you can try and clear the side, but Victor's just gonna play the time. He'll put his life on the line for it, because the clock is on their side. We are tied up at 10-10. <laughs> After that previous round, like I said, it was gonna be a massive, Where are massive you? bonus. Out from? I wanna see the economy here. And Optic will be bought within one purchase, but like I said, Victor plays this perfectly. 
and he has to be the so late patient. round piece there. Has to be. The temptation, I'm sure, to swing early could have happened there, but no, he plays it super cool, super calm. Well, it takes loud an eternity to even come through pipes there. They're yeah. so conscious of somebody tucking up, playing close contact there. Timeout, man. Again, especially with the ace still alive, they, they, they've got to consider the TP possibility. They've he can go for one and done. We've actually got a game now. Because this just felt like kind of two one-sided halves. I, I think it's a fair assessment. Now we're starting to see a little bit of a fight back. And do you know what? I like the comparison there because look at Optic's inability to convert this space on the second half sure. now, where they were given everything to play with here. Loud are yeah. pretty much doing the same. They're like, yeah, yep. we, we're not we're not going to challenge close shore. We're not going to drift out anywhere. No easy options. We're not going to try and punish the back line. And Optic are, are failing to actually convert this space the same way they did on defense. And ultimately, it's on Loud's ability to really, really I mean, it's damage control, right? Damage limitation almost, not giving away this first engagement until there's three people there, until they're able to rely on the fundamentals. There's a second swing, potentially on Aspas from Showers, perfect example. The smokes come through. Loud, just pause. They just wait for Optic to slip up. We actually might have a good best of five. Right here. Maybe. You didn't think so before? <sighs> I'm jaded. <laughs> Could you guess? 10-10. Ten, ten. It's all tied up. Optic coming alive in these final moments, these late game moments here. Decisive play as loud. Set the tempo on this half, though. They had led that scoreline back to where it is. And it looks like they want to try and aggress. Marv eats the flash, but they take the space. So a little bit of a trade out early on. Time for Actually, send out a probe here. Won't find anything on the back of it. Again, another difference to consider is look how frugal Optic are in terms of utility not being burnt up, wasted towards finding the showers control. Boomba actually sent out there on the back of the pressure coming back through, but. Yeah, he's still trying to find an opportunity towards Hooker here. Like I said, Loud haven't been pushing out. Whether or not actually it's a big concern if Loud do decide a little switch up here and do want to get a little proactive. I've got your train. Whether or not they're going to find success doing so. Seeker sent out. To initially, fine one. Aspas stands tall. But he gets a trade. Marv trades him out, though, and that's essential because normally he was able to spiral for the backhand card in no man's land, nothing to do. Utility work on point from Optic as 11's going to be beckoning on the board as Sadak and Les. They were far away. They were on the other side of the map. This isn't looking good for them here, and it looks like Optic have the solution that they'd been missing for those first couple of rounds, effectively trading out one of those key players who was able to really tear through them early on. It's Les this and Sadak, what do you do with this? How do you clear these positions? So little to play with still. Player and standing. yeah, the crossfire is golden. Timing great on the peak. Double face and optic keep four standing and make it to 11. Big round there and a big win considering how those rounds have traditionally played out towards a site. Aspas, as I said, finds the first here, but the spacing perfect this time around from optic. And willing actually to invest behind this. Engagement smokes a little deeper as well. They want to open up these sight lines, sight lines now mm. on site, as opposed to just assuming the best possible scenario that nobody's going to pressure on the back of them. I mean, actually, it's on the back of the seekers being invested, right? They want to make sure that they can maximise the value off that ultimate. The first time actually we've seen a heavy B lane from Optic. You can already see the investment of the ult very early on here. Not finding much value at all. I mean, nobody able to really backfill that through Luka. There's four towards long here. It's only FNS there. And he's conscious of the TP crunch. He has to be. Being the only man on that side. Curious now what the next step is for Optic. Are they going to just cut sound here and hope for the best in terms of the rotation? There's, there's no follow-up pressure on that. They're just going to do what looks like a, probably a burst piece here. If there is a flash to come off it, there is Crashy's got it in hand. 
and there it is. Straight through we go. Less completely blind. Has to dip his way back in. Mark early. He's fine Sassy on the way through here in this bloodlust. You can see Sadak wants in. Yay yeah, still there, but gets deleted. Sadak still holding. Pankata trades it well as well. Making sure they at least keep even numbers, but look who remains. Look at Victor. 30 seconds left. Victor is One behind the remaining. wire. Pankata turns it. Marved in the 1v2. Unnoted. Espa seems to be considering it. Remaining. It's done though. Mars found him. And now a 1v1. Pancada already noted the back of the site as well. He was the He's one. He's got who... the spike. He must have got the spike back. I thought he was getting checked on, but the footstep seven bullets. All that they've got. Pancada still standing. And Loud still alive. It's 11 11. These two teams, I you can't get between them right now. It is looking it's like it's coming see. down to the wire here. You can see Marv just considering the TP there, if he could slip away, but uh, I mean, he needs another 10 seconds on the clock for that to work. Sadak, though, this re-aggress to prevent Optic from garnering sight control here. Mm. And Pankada finding that kill as well onto Victor. That could have really turned things around. All tied up here. Tour de Force available. Optic, you want string to play, together this purchase. Play. No ultimates on the other side, but Aspas one away, Less one away, Sadhack one off the Seekers as well. Kanye paved the way to so find this opener. He's trying it. You can see before the intention, but again, this utility is making a problem. Ball. Marv's done really well to find Pancada. He was the one keeping those two players kind of somewhat safe in shower, but now this should at least allow for a plant. You might take some damage for it. What? Aspas! How do you have the right to find two? Spots one, try and make a run for it. He's trying to clear this out. No one close. Great work from Marv, keeping composure under these pressure moments. Because now we see what happens. Zanak with the spray, tries to find it, gets it. F and S just completely revealed. Victor, though, the Seeker, he's going to take down Zanak. Again. And you're right, Pain Shield's back around. Sassy and Les, what do you do with this? Marv can still be a nuisance. One they have to clear one. Sassy's going to take down Victor. The Pain Shells aren't going to do enough here, as now it's all on Marv in a 1v2. Diffuse going to come in. He finds one. He oh, takes Sassy. it off the Diffuse, but it's Sassy still to find it to get allowed to 12. 3 HP. Marv comes excruciatingly Match close point. to winning that one. And Optic now. <sighs> Dire straights now. Backs against the wall. And so, again, this time around, you see how eager they are to prevent Victor from playing late here in showers. It's so close. Yeah, you can see exactly. Yeah. A sigh of relief. It's OT, or it's loud with map two. As we go once again, and the money is shoddy from Optic down on Spectres. Whatever they can scrape together. Oh, to respect that utility early on, though. That's you now, with Aspas doing this much damage from showers, you can see Optic actually now leaning the complete opposite way. They're over-investing to dig him out of that position. They retrieve the orb, showstopper online, Viper's pit available, orbital strike available. Optic could do this, Lauren. Good. But I look at the man, Aspas. I'm looking at Sassy over here. I'm looking at the Sadax coming over. They still have yet to clear him. Victor, gonna go full. He's going full. Right he finds Sadax, but Sassy is still alive. Victor finds Sassy. Bankana's here. Aspas is still here. He's been deleted by Victor. And now a 2v2, and look what they've got. Leicester with that judge. It ain't ideal. And Carter's position noted. TP. TP time, get out of there. They've worked out enough. It's time to go. And Les is on just a foot race at the moment. He's got the Spectre. It's not much. But it might be enough to take down Victor. Oh, and Molly is divine at this time. Wait. Pops the ult to try and find a way through to facilitate the push out from CT here. But it also draws attention. And Carter's not coming through this way. He's coming through from Hooker. And they are none the wiser. This could be the brick in the small of the back of Optic. Is Les trying to keep all those eyes on him? Do not look anywhere else. I am the problem for you. And Carter desperately trying to clear. Does he spot anyone? HP, no. no. And Victor staying on site, Marved, sitting <gasps> towards Long. Did Victor spot that? I don't know if he did. Marved and Victor just need to hold. Pencarda starts to close in. The barrel shows. And now one more player less. What can you do? What can you find? Victor so low on HP, but he's still alive. He's still breathing, but he's going to lose his teammate. Marv goes down another defuse. He's just going to try and sit this, but time has gone away. And Victor, it's one HP is all he needed. We're tied up. It's 12-12. It's OT. Switching sides. Victor finds Over the time. ace to force overtime here on bind. Can you believe it, Lauren? 
I mean, this second half has been so back and forth. Both so teams good. adjusting perfectly as the rhythm of this game has changed. <sighs> Without breaking a sweat, seemingly. Well, I'm glad they're calm. I'm having kittens up here. Mate, I'm gonna have a seat in a moment. I'm gonna have to grab this screen with me down here. I need you. This is only up to, we've got a This was like the unknown one. This was the yeah, unknown this, map. The, yeah. This was the weird one. I mean, we've got Breeze, Ice Bar, oh, there's so much goodness to this. We're back underway, it's OT between these two. Brazil's loud up against North America's Optic. Doing everything they can. It looks like Aspas wants to just tear them limb from limb. Taking that early space and forcing them back into the shower. He knows what it's like to try and thrive in there. What? And Victor! Get out of here! So fast with a Yaden Ice Sarsi. This is a shutdown. Optic keep in control. Aspas and Les only left to watch is the 1v3 would really call for some heroics. And I just don't think he's got it. Optic quick with this one. I mean, Loud looked to get a little pacier here towards A site. Optic just ripped them limb from limb. Comfortable there holding on to sight. Concern being though, Optic felt a little flat in some of these attacking rounds. Now they have to fight with well. Yeah. Cool. Unlucky Sadak. A timeout. I think you're right though, that discomfort was certainly apparent here. And Loud were very much, I'd say, in control for the you know, dominant part of this. So probably the right option here for Optic to try and maybe address that coming in. Take almost pause for thought. Yeah, I mean, the timeout being called here because a lot rides on this. Like I said, Optic didn't really come away with anything to sort of replicate. No real comfort on the attack. So I'm curious to see, actually, what the approach is here. Whether or not Loud, or, I mean, I was talking about a potential for them to dig a little deeper, maybe... Get a little proactive on their defense. Well, no, this is the time now. They throw a spanner in the works. A, a real curveball for Optic. To try and catch a grip on. What a series already. <laughs> Just like... You think at this point, usually it's like it's the best of three. It's like, ah, oh, this is map two. I mean, yeah, if somebody wins it, it's Pretty like, good, yeah, yeah, cool. We could have... Like I said, this veto for me could, could go the distance. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a chance. Ascent being the one that, uh, in my eyes, is already flipped. Bind yeah. if Optic close this. Yeah, I, I think in my mind when I came in looking at the veto, I saw Ascent as one for loud just because I, I liked how they looked on it. I think they you know delivered enough to keep me on board. Yeah, gets flipped. Okay, cool. Binds the unknown, and we get this close affair. I mean, we you can sit there and analyze the rest of the map, as I'm sure the desk will, but... As it stands, we go back in. What does Optic have for us now? Because again, this half of them wasn't great. However, it's Loud have put four players towards A. Less is very alone. He will have support on the way. Sassy's made it over here in time, but again, Optic have built a lot of pressure up on Long already. They've taken at least one of the two steps that you need here. And now, take a little bit of that space back. Okay, they pulled over an additional player as well. You can have Sadak coming over on this side too. Aspas could still be called upon here to hold down this shower's position if Optic decide to TP or even peel away from this. It's yeah, head presented, but that's actually going to miss that one. The investment of the poison orb now. Optic might actually it's decide to follow through. I don't, I don't know if they noted this. Les has pushed back up on this. They have no idea. While that flash came through, Les took the advantage. I love that play from him. So brave to do it in these moments. Ajay tries to do the dance, deals with him well. Gonna switch to the secondary and get out of danger. Out. They are desperate to try and shut him down. Aspas even on the case here. But again, we're on 30 seconds. Where is the rest of Optic in this case? Trying to break through towards long. TP taken, rotations pulled, but the player still stands. Look it's Pancada. Look at Crashies. Oh, punishment here. Crashies could be the dagger in the back. No way is Aspas checking this. <gasps> no way what? are they checking on this! And okay, we've got to spin across because Pancada's doing similar scenes here. He was waiting very late towards that A side. Sadax dealt with crashes, and Pancada's kept space, but you can see that utility just remaining on the side there. So again, they must be aware of this. FNS finds Big Pancada, win. that's huge. And now it's all the players coming back in. They've addressed the unknown. They found the player who they did not note before. And now a 3v3. One kill on the Viper's pit. 
for FNS as well. It's an awkward position to get it going though. Oh, Sassy on the swing! It's so good! Victor. And now, the one v one He's got the Sassy! He's got the Showstopper online! Sassy has got barely any HP, really! Takes some chunks of damage! Victor needs to play so composed here. Keep the pressure yeah. up! Oh, he fights! Sassy! It's 14 to 12! Optic have done it in OT! That's two now on the board for the boys, and they are looking hot to trot here. What they have looked best is having this robust support system, Very utility so. investment. Um, yes, we're going to build around Ye here, but can Marv really deliver on that role? Again, on the attacking side, eyes don't naturally draw towards him as much. Mm. I, I think for me, when I, I consider this game, I'm trying to think of what sort of scoreline would bring me back to normality. What, what do I need to see from Loud that makes me go, okay, we, we, we get to unlock the full best of five, right? Like, that's that's obviously what we want here. Um, and I, I do need a commanding scoreline. I need almost denial of any double digits near Optic. I need it to look like, hey, there's a reason that we play this map, and you don't. So, again, I do need to see a little bit of um, confirmation of brilliance here from them. Because they, they've, they've had some very close maps, and it can be arduous in those sort of games. And, and this should be quite carefree for Optic to an extent, if you think about the pressure in which way it applies. So that stands Optic and Victor leading the way forward. He's going to cop a little bit of damage and just flash through it. Wait, he Find one. found Aspas in the heels. Fight I thought he had no chance of that. Going to dip away just before the Shock Dart comes in as well. Dink towards Take Sadak and Crashies. Going to find one. Jump peeking on 3 HP. Of course you are, Victor. Going to fall back away from this. Ajay is going to be catching the cross as well. There are layers to this. Like an onion. Good choice. Love a bit of Shrek. <laughs> you know, jumpy death uh, mess on a wild no trade. swing. Zero trade potential yeah. on that. It all can give them nothing. The literal green wall is still up. They have to go through so much to even try and find a way back into this. Sassy and Panicata, what are you going to do? Okay, Marv's found already one of them. This is clean. That's five alive for Optic. Optic give no opportunity back into sight there for Loud. Again, less, I've got to say, just desperation to find something. Jump peeking across double doors. And Aspas, if he's going to be playing this position, he has to be very, very careful. Sure. I think a lot of these hits are going to come through. We talk about the support system, the utility usage for Optic. They can isolate him and find that kill. Again, it gives the opportunity to that free plant towards main as well. They don't have to save plant on the right side of this pyramid. They can plant it open. Again. Now it's how far does this go? I look at what what can FNS do as well as an in-game leader. Ooh, aggression. There is a trap to this. And if it gets removed, that should be an indicator of something. But can you use I'm gonna come and try and get around man. and Victor's like, no no. Not today, actually. No I'm nonsense. still watching that. And for me, it's yeah. How, how much can FNS do on a map like this? Trying to call a, a whole new look. You've been given you know a new set of cards to try and play with. Completely different card game to try and work out. And for now, it's still looking kind of flawless. It's early, right? Yeah. yeah. See a paint gather unless we find anything here, but. Ye has so much control, so much space here, and actually Les going to be spotted out. Finds the wall bang as well. Right, fair enough. You can see the smiles on the faces in the player cams. Yeah, and actually Pankada will be removed as well. Again, yeah, actually on the other side of things, this is a, a little bit of a role switch up as well to have Pankada be the one to move across to the chamber. It's been two flawless rounds, right? Yeah, back to back, prime gaming flawlesses. Cool. Is it happening? Right. We'll check back in in <laughs> five rounds or so, I guess. Yeah. Uh, give me, give me like two full gun rounds, and I'll, I'll tell you. I'll, t I'll tell you that one. Like, I, I, I just feel like we're watching like the possibility of something great, but then you know, reality, you, know, you wake up and, and it just doesn't happen anymore. Sadak just get it fruity with it. The underhand flash is so good. Aspas and Sadak. I love that play, just crunching towards middle. Like, guys, you've been running this. We, we know what you're up to. Not, not going to happen again. Yay with the upgrade, though. Going to dive on in, gets himself a rifle, and actually has facility now to cross towards A. They, they're going to be able to get that side cross in. There could be a flank coming in, though, so there is a bit of a time limit towards it. Looking towards that spike going down. Obviously, the trap's removed with Marv falling. Victor has to opt towards that safe plant. Pankada's here so early. Yeah, when do they even consider this? 
when does this become something that internal clock determines is a problem? But they're so dedicated towards... Ooh, the shot goes out from Pancada. He doesn't find what he wants, but it's a trade. Let's find Victor and Crashes comes right Wait, back what? in. Yay, yeah, what? Excuse me, Optic! This is not meant to be what you're doing here. You're on the bonus round. Yeah, he's barely alive, but it doesn't matter. It's still a body to try and get past Sassy. Has to overextend to find Crashes. He pushes in and Crashes finds him! Okay, maybe I'm aboard. Maybe, 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 maybe. That's Why two standing, two rifles now down. come through. That's three on the board. And they can push the money right back down for loud here. Crashes, man. Goes huge, finds this first kill. Then the second, actually, the follow-up. The swing from Ye to secure that kill onto Pancarte. He was the threat in that round, Lauren. As soon as Marv falls, so much space to be taken. And like I said, the timing, he's so early. As soon as the spike's planted. Wow. <laughs> That's a, that is a massive swing, converting and, and, the bonus here. And talk about pressure, that puts it right back in Loud's corner, right? Like, hey, this is your map, remember? This is the one that we don't play. You better turn up now. This is when you start getting a little worried, getting a little nervous. There's already Ye starting to feel himself pushing further in towards the site. A quick beheading towards Sassy, but you can see oh. Sadek trying to get right into it. Crashies. Quickly Clean. Quelling the problem as Aspas did slip the net. Let's find oh, Ye. Okay, they are still being a huge problem here, and I kind of like that under the skin. 3v3, but look at the HP here. Less on 5, Aspas on 21. A Vandal to work with, but... Uh, lots of ground ooh, to cover. Shots. Pankata going to find one onto Crashies, though. Absolute but shot look at and the a wall. half. The ball's going to cut them off. That's two of them, though. Can they trade it effectively if they do go through that? Let's see if they can make it right. Oh, oh, oh he gets good. outdone. Less has got him. And this could be the answer right back out of the FNS. The Kingmaker himself has to deliver. Stand and do anything. No, Aspas waited so patiently. Finds the timing, finds the diffuse, and loud. Stark reminder, this should be their map. Convert that Thrifty again after conceding the bonus. Optic is still going to be Finally. pretty <laughs> flush in terms of the finances. Yeah, the actually yeah, after 9k. With all. Yeah, I mean, that's the other thing. With finding three rounds unanswered, Crashies, Ye, and Victor all now sit on their ultimates. Actually, we'll be able to spread the funds as well to make sure Marv has got a, a rifle. Loud of, uh, I'll be honest, especially in these buy rounds, they have to start preventing Optic from finding a plant. Also, finding the first blood. Because Optic, uh, I mean, even you see Ye there, the, the, the willingness to dig so deep towards spawn. First time, actually, Optic going to lean towards B in the early round, and there's a Viper's Pit to deal with. But I like this from Aspas already starting to walk tube as well. It oh just yeah. it instantly allows That's for works. rotation. I really like that. Look at the setup. Get out of my way! Towards Arches. See Pankada tucked in deep. Sassy actually going to clear out with the Owl Drone. I'm so prepared for this. Yeah. You are powerless! No snake fight either. Oh, okay. Yay. What you got for us here? It's not clean enough. Yeah. Loud are so prepared for that. That was a gorgeous round from them. Perfect rotations, beautiful positioning. Even with everything that Opti brought out there, it made no odds to it. And just that push up alone from Aspas taking so much space, patience being delivered. Which is why it's kind of key for Optic to remain in this default, at least show presence elsewhere. I mean, like I said, this, this is the round where the Viper's Pit's invested. It's the first time that Optic have lent this way. And whether or not Loud can have that sort of comfort in any of the other rounds that Optic decide to explore towards B. We'll have to wait and see, but... So yeah, that's it. It's going to swing uh, right back in favor of Loud. And actually on the back of the Thrifty conversion. Look at their funds now. Aspas immediately punishing Ye. Got a key engagement towards Tube here. That's really setting the bar, isn't it, going forward of, hey, that's a fight you might have to have. Right here. Glasgow kiss from the Owl Drones. It's Marv actually now. The back of Sassy being forced back. Interesting here is there's lots of space that Optic are able to find. The wall's going to go up, but... He baited the drop. I'm, I'm wondering if they'll be able to find any value off the back of that, if anyone gets a little bit hap-handed. Yeah, that's okay. So it's going to kind of said, reassure that there is still a play here. But Marv's found Pancada, so... Victor's again, found one as well. Yeah, this is huge. They've been able to just slip a little bit deeper as Crashies thread in the needle, but just spots a player out of place. Going to try and find this extended fight with Aspas. Not pretty enough to make it work there. And now you look at these positions. 
Sadak noting one on the way back in. Aspas aware of it too. Good work to clear. And now the two isolated on the side. Mark drifting across. Got a little bit, but it'll at least allow for the plant to come in. Marv has to be key in this, though. <laughs> and I guess that's finds one. one way to do it. Starts well and now can hit that rotation. And you've got to look at the other side of things for FNS. He has to play his life here. The plant is open, so Marv now repositioning. Can actually be in a position to bail FNS out. If he just tucks into Brick, Brick sorry, and then Marv can take first contact. He's got to play a little bit deeper. If he goes one down first, remaining. it's all for nothing. FNS takes that first real contact. That's lovely work. The push and pull between the two. Sadak has no options. <laughs> Optic toying with them now. Converting the round when they did need it to get back on track here of keeping that scoreline building in their way. Four to two here. Textbook stuff. Once again, Marv repositioning, allowing FNS, like I said, to tuck in behind Bricks. At that point, feels so comfortable for Optic. That's the opener as well. Marv finding a key fight towards B. And actually, Victor on the other side, things following up. Beautiful round from Optic. Good job. I feel like they're playing carefree here, and that could be a really dangerous game. No expectations on them, at least in this map on its own, but a complete parallel to how Loud will be feeling, in my mind. Substantial pressure, have to deliver on a map that's meant to be in their favor. Obviously, at this sort of scoreline, it has to happen now. So if Optic can find another opener here towards B. It's a slow approach here, almost to the minute mark on the clock. This time around, actually loud, playing a little deeper. Pankata actually here, yeah, going to spot out a lot with that swing. Resets it, I mean, it's again going to be sassy from Arches. Be on red alert, right? Yeah, I mean, less. He's got to stay alive here. I mean, it's Ye on the other side, but Optic actually peel away from this. I'm trying to see if Ye's going to be able to get given an angle. Oh! Yeah, he did get given an angle. They maybe thought they were hitting the brakes for a second, and Sassy gets punished, as does Les, and now the rotations are desperate. They're trying to get towards the right place, and even just this to cut off the vision. FNS is going to lock down the sidelines. They can get that spike across now and safely get that plant in. Marv waiting. Just eats the flash. He looks dead and gone, buried. It looked like he almost got away, but caught in the end by Sadak and keeps a little bit of chance here. For the loud side, still paranoid about middle having to take the time to clear. Aspas forced to do so, but Ye's isolated Zadek and no trade could have been found. As you can see, Victor waiting in the fumes. Spots a barrel, takes a life. And now the 1v2 Aspas. How much can one man do here? He's still got a little bit of time with this, but Victor, the only one he's really noted. Good tag, but no frag. Victor's still alive. And you can see the readjust as well. Crashy's closing in, and he's got no idea of it. Crashy's. The surprise on the corner and Optic. They look pretty good here, Mike. I'm getting worried for, uh, for Loud. Yeah, I'm already worried. And it's only 5-2. It uh, it's still doable here for okay. Loud to string together some rounds and actually having the benefit of the economy at least being built up here. Pancada now sat on the tour de force, so you can offset this purchase just a little bit. But they are going to pump the brakes. They They're going to call the timeout. They have to. This, as I said, when we look at what this map means, right, for Optic, it's not necessarily a throwaway. Obviously, you'd love to win it. That's just stupid. However, what it is is a no-pressure map in that regard, right? We don't have to win this. We got oh, a whole other anything's map. Anything's a bonus. Right? Exactly. We don't play this at all. This is, you know, we, we never really lean on this. It's fine. We can play fast, loose, new roles coming out. You flip the script, you look at loud. It is the polar opposite. Absolutely. Whether or not... I mean, for me, it's 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 got to be Aspas to really be the one to find some value in the early round here if Loud decide to switch things up. Because Optic, it's another example of you give them the space, they're absolutely making it work here. Struggled a little bit on their attack inside of Bind, but here they have they have so much control early on. Marv's able to get so deep twice now towards Nest and find an opener towards B. And that's actually when Loud have preemptively rotated. They, they've, they've got the right read. They keep throwing away rounds like that. It's going to be really, really difficult for them to establish any sort of foundation for this comeback. But it is only three rounds. Blade Storm available, Tour de Force available here. But now still have a chance. Actually, Sadhax does have his ultimate as well. <laughs> Potential here to deny a, a stacked up okay. execute. That's what Optic decide to opt for. It's different if that might be the case. Aspas actually suppressed here, so he's 
Now in no man's land without a dash. He didn't get cleared by the drone. Potentially he's not cleared. The flash almost perfect here. They have no idea. Aspas <gasps> can do so much damage. That's two already. Tries to get to third. Gets to third. Gets a rifle and gets to keep his life. Unbelievable scenes from Aspas. We said he had to be a proponent for this side to really propel them forward. And he's been just that crash. He's can't do anything to clear him. He is standing tall and holding the line for loud. That's what they needed. The 4K, <laughs> the prime gaming flawless, Lauren. And it's Aspas, like I said, he needs to be the one to be the aggressor for loud. The flash is almost perfect, Ads. I think he's scared to turn it. Doesn't matter anyway, he goes unchecked and punishes Optic for it. One enemy remaining. Just when you need him to as well. Finds a response, finds Loud's third round. Actually, on the back of that, we'll get the operator online. So, an opportunity for him to actually use that as a. If you want to play, let's play. We'll catapult into the next few rounds. Yeah, forced away, though, from double doors initially. Yeah, he's actually burnt up his dash pretty early on as well, so I mean, he sort of burst oh. to this, but Marved will find an opener. That's over towards Pyramid. That's from mid. That's a problem. That's the what second that is. time as well sanak has been spotted jump peeking here. That's best. I mean, it'd be a hard trade. <laughs> I mean, again, he's, so out in no he's, yeah. he's out in no man's land. And now he's feeling very alone. The wall divide, and Aspas caught in a tricky spot. Two players on the other side, and he's paranoid about middle. There's nobody holding this double door, so he has to worry about both angles here. Like, he has to worry about so many angles here. Potentially so much. Obviously, we know where they are and where they aren't, but he's got no idea. And you can see no the dash. He's now stuck, and a missed shot. It goes astray. Panic starts to set in. All the fear is starting to build up. He still he holds it. it. He still holds the line. It's a fake. And you're absolutely right. While all this was happening, it was only ever two players. Left. And even one of them makes it away. FNS makes a mad dash for it back towards that B site. The spike's going to go down. And yes, they're going to be able to get back here in time, at least to maybe challenge. But already, Optic are going to be able to just absolutely lock this site down. This is brutal for Loud now. Oh, and Marv's going to make it worse. A quick pick on Pancada, and he's not relenting at all. He wants to take this fight. He'll be the man you have to pass. 37 HP, but he's still standing. Right here. Has to finally here relent a little. Leave it up to the others. Yay, yeah, controlling middle. And they're getting nothing. Marv, the immovable man, still finds three in this post plant. Yay's yeah, there, and Yay yeah, is the one to shut down the account. Optic are pulling out all the stops here. Beautiful response as well. Aspas completely played out of that round. Okay, he's posted up. And he still Eventually, hit that shot, Eventually man. finds one, but, I mean, at that point, there's nobody else there to follow through. And actually, for FNS, it's almost like, yeah, the operator's there. Guys, hit B. Fast. Yeah. yeah, it gives you even more incentive, right? It's just like you're already kind of in trending that way, so. Yeah, this is tough times. Brazilian fans, to watch this. You felt safe here, maybe. You thought this could have been the way back in the reverse sweep, potentially, but... Optic proving their metal off that lower bracket run, and you're right. It's quick, it's pacey, and Ye's already in, but he gets dealt with. Quickly quelled by Aspas, who gets himself out of danger as well. He knows that there's more coming his way. The site will be at least kind of given up to an extent. Sadak's still fighting for it. The trade does come through, but mid's already been questioned. Pancada fills the space, and Loud holding on to this. Crashies, I don't see this happening for you. you now got so much to try and get past. I mean, the man can turn that real easy. A cheeky underhand is not enough to get past Crashies. He knows where one is now, and they're going to know that there was that lurk in middle. He knows where these last two players are. Can he at least get the plant down and keep his life belly? 8 HP. And he might get the timing on this. If he is able to get one and back away, he couldn't disengage. But what an attempt. That could have been something to truly fear going forward. But Les is alive. Les will get the defuse, and that will be four. Great discipline. From the young player here for Lau as well, not to overpeak as soon as that door opens. That's when things start falling apart for Loud. Pancada there, just in the nick of time. <laughs> He's still nearly, thank God they were stacked up again. Yes. He, he was, a, I, I felt like he almost hit that mode where it oh, yeah. lines up for you. Just fall like Neo in the Matrix, just like everything makes sense. Well needed round there, the Brazilian side. 
keep that scoreline close because again, this is I I I wanted this to look clear cut, and that is something it's it certainly not. is not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. By a long shot as well. No, but there shouldn't be depth, right? So that's something we do have to bring up. That if you're not playing a map on a regular basis against high tier teams, right, you shouldn't technically have the depth to be able to adjust all this much. But again, this freedom that Optic are showing, these good, just kind of not necessarily fast and loose calls, but just kind of feeling out the game is working very well for them. Yeah, and ultimately that leans towards FNS, right, to be able to really get a read on the game and 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 call decisively in the mid round, which we've seen like a, a, a round with the Aspas on the operator towards A, right? As soon as that indicator is shown. Optic are in a position to capitalize on it immediately. So you've got to give credit where it's due. But, Loud, is this the start of them stabilizing a little bit here? If they can tie up this half, it would be nothing short of a miracle in my eyes, yeah. especially with how it started. Yeah, well, they've, they've got to stem the bleed. They're, they're, they were hemorrhaging rounds until the last few that they've been able to put a couple back on the board. But again, even just seeing the scoreline, it's still a little baffling to me, a little bit of a conundrum. It should never have been like this. And we do then have to turn the narrative and the idea of this game that <laughs> this could be a 3-0 if it keeps going Optic's way. It does feel like it's going to stop that Loud should have that capability, but Aspas already going walkabouts. And this is the man we needed for Loud to be. Nowhere to run! In the position to find damage, but actually the Hunter's Fury from Crashies will find one. Sassy, Sassy in response, nothing at all. Oh, and Marved is on the punish. Get out of here, Marved. Uncalled for almost, but so aware. So capable. Again, this should be a free plant. No one can challenge. You know that Les is kind of posted on that B site. You know where all these players are going to be. You know where Sassy is after the Hunter's Fury. You got a little bit of freedom. The only unnoted player would be Sadaki now. Ah, that's CT and Victor waiting on the other side. Barrel shown, frag found, underhand, and this man is just shutting this out. Go safe. You that's it, back away. This is seven. <laughs> Sassy might even get hunted down here as well, Marved eager. They need these rifles, Mike. One enemy oh. right. still wins it, Marved. No. And Crash is going to find the second. Flawless. It's a prime gaming, flawless, Lauren. Loud. I mean, they're on the struggle bus now. They're staring down the barrel of an 8-4 half on what should have been a, a given coming to breach yes. here. Crashy stepping up for Optic, 13-5, and five, leading the charge. Yay as well, 10-6. and six. Optic are becoming the embodiment of a nightmare right now. This was never meant to be the map this happened on. This is when you get those fever dreams just dragging you out of your sleep to a reality you just never expected because this was, as said, meant to be the safety net. This was the map that was meant to, if you needed it, bring it back in. The whole advantage of the veto set this into motion. Time to fight. It's time to throw down. Optic. Get a real quick fight on this. Loud gonna try and fight this mid presence that has been shown time and time again. Crashy's gonna try and deal with it as best he can. Spots at least a player, Beautiful but it doesn't matter. Sadak. Sadak has had enough of this. Loud now find themselves a 4v3. A man advantage here. That's what the Viper's pit as well, gonna be able to slow down anything, but look where Ye's managed to get Ow. to. You can see that slow rotation of the spike. It's going to be there eventually. It's just how much can they keep their attention on Marv potentially? He's been lurking here so often as well, just to plant the seeds of yeah. a potential fake, but then be able to backstab mid Sassy on the cross. Might keep a player dedicated. Again, if they can ah. keep a couple more. Oh, yeah, he's got him. Yay yeah, overextends through That's CT. This is massive. The only one who can maybe divide this is Aspas. He has to be. Oh, yay! Yeah, get out of here. This guy's a god. Straight up. <gasps> Did Marv spot him? He's just going to tuck himself in regardless. He can hold the entirety of mid if he wants to. The timing, it looks like he's dead. He is. Okay, it's a 2v2. It's still possible. Less playing back around on the flank. Where does that go? CT on mid. It looks like he's going to opt for CT. That puts him in Ye's realms of reality. This guy is just on a tear. Ye is feeling this game. It's all his. And what does Less do with it? Well, you got to go for it, right? you got to do something. you got to try and make this moment your own because right now you are staring down a dire situation. Ye is being so slippery in time. He's being bought. And Les is being pulled in every direction. Victor closes down. And I did not expect this scoreline at all, Mike. Absolute perfection there from Switching Victor side. and Ye. Just to bait and play each other in. I mean, there's nothing for Les to do. Night, night. And Ye just landing every shot necessary to secure this fantastic performance here on Breeze in the first half. 
All of Loud's biggest fears have to be coming true in front of them in these seconds, in these rounds. Every single one is accumulating now because it's not meant to have been like this. It really wasn't. Is it enough, though? That's the big question. Do Optics still have more to bring or Loud? Are they just going to wake up and make this game their own? Guys, take it away. Thank you very much, Pansy and Hypok. It was not meant to be like this. This was the map that we had the most questions about when it comes to Optics. Sideshow, are you impressed with how much, uh, how well they've done so far? Does it exceed your expectations? No, I'm pretty disappointed, actually. <laughs> about how no, this is insane. I mean, they've just come out and they've only twisted a, a few little pieces and suddenly they look amazing. I think they're really just feeling the momentum. They may want to start painting Breeze at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, there's one, one player, I think, on Loud that's really trying to keep them in the game. In certain rounds, it feels like Aspas is doing everything he can to keep him up. He's 11 and 9 now, but he needs to go nuclear in the second half to keep him in. And it feels so Herculean out of Aspas while on the side of Ye, it just it feels easy, right? It, it kind of feels like he's breezing, he's just chilling. The team is setting him up super well. Meanwhile, for Aspas, it feels like he's having to 1v5 every single round yeah. to try to make something happen, and that's that's exhausting. Ye throughout this tournament has been consistently great, but I feel like he's taking the step in this match and this this map into absolute excellence. This this was Aspas and what a play it was. And that's what I mean, right? Like it, it it's requiring plays like that where he just kind of has to put the team on his back and go, guys, I'm going to try to do something on my own to keep it competitive. Yeah. And it, I, it's so difficult. I get scared for the second half here too because Ye has a wealth of possibility to go crazy on the op, to go crazy yeah. on the aggression. This map is a Jets playground, especially when he has the team able to support him. Yeah. I mean, Aspas almost reminds me of what Ye was trying to do against Mech back at Mars. <laughs> is Berlin, you know, <laughs> doing everything in his power. But uh, Pansy asked the question, is this enough now, do you guys think? I, I think so. This yeah. looks to me like Optic in unstoppable form with fingertips already on the trophy. Yeah, <laughs> this feels like final form Optic a thousand percent. It, this is too difficult to overcome. Yeah. Oh, well, Bala, you're going to get to keep your hair. Uh, but uh, Loud, they have to dig deeper here if they want a shot at that trophy. Take it away, Pansy and Hypok. Well, now, Mike, it's now or never, right? This is do or die time. This was, I wasn't ready for this in this moment. I think a lot of us were waiting for those next maps, but as said, Optic took the ball by the horns and they've dragged this game as to potentially the close. Loud, how much do you want this? How bad do you want to fight for this? It's up to you now. You get the attacking side to define it. At four to eight, Optic in the lead. Now that's actually going to try and send two down tube here. Let's try and backstab this. A site hold of Optic. There's no trap here, so Optic have to be conscious of the possibility, but it's a three man walk. <laughs> Victor just holding contact oh, here on the rope. Oh. Gonna find the first, though. Aspas elsewhere will find Yate. Good trade out, at least. And they've managed to slip the net a little bit here, so Victor is potentially about to be crunched. Yeah, brilliant work from Aspas. Maybe he can't 1v5 every round, but he can certainly find a bit of impact here and there. Vanessa has a nasty little copy to be in. Oh, that's unfortunate for Crashies, but good work for Loud. I don't know if I can take another second half comeback. <laughs> I really don't. Loud, get the pistol. <laughs> we'll see how far this goes. Can they do it once again? Great opener as well. To walk this through again. No trap in tube. Optic were aware of uh, the possibility, at least, Victor in position to try and spot that out, but punished for it. Loud come back and says, Pankala actually going to run this through with a ghost, but two Bulldogs. Be key here to take some ranged engagements, but not loud again. Rinse and repeat here. The same triple walk down tube. This time around, Aspas going to be positioned towards main. Is there a flash? Okay. I'm waiting for the contact. Yeah, it's, it's it's out of sorts. It looked like off the back of contact, they want to do a deep flash to try and maybe crunch a player with that right click. But not going to be the case. Optic being handled comfortably. Aspash, you're nasty with it. A flawless round. And Loud get right back on track. We need them to wake the hell up here. Otherwise, well, they won't have a chance to. So, Rifle's going to come out now for Optic. Another bonus round for Loud? Should be. If it's sticking to the script. Aspas two off the blade storm here, so potential to retrieve one early on. If he finds a kill, that could really turn this round in their favor. That's going to opt for the Spectre here, so it's feeling as if he's going to be the tip of the spear in terms of this B site here, because the Lent has four here with one player towards bottom mid. 
nice quick rotations though from Optic. Yeah, they're they're all on on route. Crashy actually managed to get out of nest there. I have no idea how he's still alive. Honestly, Marv looks like he could be in danger as well. This is very precarious at the moment. Loud could try and close the gap. Great work between Pancada and Aspas. Still doing the damage, but on the back lines, Optic hold. The slow gonna keep that spike safe. Out of the hands of Loud for now, and Sassy can't quite get it back. At least gonna get the upgrade to the Bulldog. But again, what else are you gonna do with this now? It's so difficult for them to retrieve the spike. Actually, both should be noted here, but FNS has gone walkabouts on mid. Marv down to 56 HP. He's got to be careful here. Cannot give his life away. But Victor in a really rough spot. Yeah, and FNS needs to speed this up a little bit. And Sassy's already considering well, the it. Not there, yeah. So now it just, yeah, that's remaining. lovely. Knife in the back, FNS. Going to dip away. The assassin going to make it out, no problem. Sit on a new deeper angle. Pancada, nothing feels safe anymore. The back line has been broken. You noted Victor, and obviously they know where Mark 30 was seconds left. earlier on. But again, this is going to need some real theatrics to get this one going. And I like this deeper hold from Victor again, allowing FNS to sit on that A site, play a little safer. And Carter now trying to crest the corner. And there it is, Victor waiting. Three stand, three rifles. Another round for Optic. Big win. Big win from Optic to close that out. But Loud, you know, they came into that. Almost doing a little bit of damage helps to get some of these ultimates a little closer. Aspas now on the Blade Storm. Potential here to run the operator. And yeah, look at as if that's going to be the case. Position towards mid here, whether or not he's going to find an open angle through double doors. Same setup once again from Optic as well. Actually, with the adjustment of Marv being over towards A side, at least investing a trap this time around. Yay to hold down the fort towards B site. Now, should almost be expecting this operator purchase. Now it's noted. See how now Optic react on the back of that. Almost anticipating a B hit. With only one player spotted in mid. Yeah, this is a... Uh, feels like a little gamble here. Well, an overread almost. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to pay off. As wrong place potentially. <laughs> and wrong time. As Loud building in towards this A hit. Because he's got his knife back online. That would be the perfect timing to invest this. Yeah, I think they're starting to question it. Because Crashies are starting to drift back over towards the A site. So... I'm surprised they haven't. Oh, I guess that'll do it. No worries. Fragment gonna follow. Victor gonna fall off this. And FNS tucks himself in the corner. Created this pocket once again. There comes the knife from Victor. And there's a flank on the route as well. You can see it, yay, in those back lines. Aspas has to go huge here. Yeah, he does. Well, he has to get this door open at the right time. FNS is unnoted by the Aldrin because of this pocket. The Kingmaker himself could be so essential to this round. He's going to hear all these steps. He's going to call it out, but Aspas finds Victor. But there he is, unleashing, just destroying them. And there should be the follow-up from Ye. It's perfect from Optic. As much as Aspas could have been a problem with this time, it doesn't matter. It's slipped between the fingertips. And he's going to just face the music here, as this may be the last chance to dance for them, as 10 will be on the board here. Aspas desperate to take him down with him, but it's done for. It's cooked. That's 10 now for Optic. And they remove the operator. FNS man with the trap play. Just a little pocket to play from, and he absolutely punishes Loud. Beautiful setup. So nice. Again, actually, the trap goes off as well, makes it even worse for Loud. They can't even get out of dodge. Good right timing from Ye to be able to get around there, just on the back of that trade towards FNS. Super nice. Well, welcome to Loud's absolute dread and torment. This was never how it was meant to be. This was never the intended outcome. And Aspas again has to be almost destroyed at having to pull this one forward at this point. Desperate for an opportunity. Pleading for a chance here as Optic are giving them nothing. No angles presented here for Aspas with the Blade Storm. And same setup from Optic. They're happy to just sit really deep on this. Victor not even investing his utility early on. It's just crashes to send out the recon and the owl drone. And Marv's on this. A little bit more of a passive angle as well. Could catch that cross if Aspas doesn't do this diligently. Out of range. Teleport ready. 
And Marv hyper focused towards middle, but while this happens, it is going to be building towards that A site hit. But again, deep play doesn't get anything, I think, off the back of that. My ult is ready. The playing drone. This is so much on Aspas, though. Again, it's sheriffs. Yep. It's it's light armor. It's a guardian. Pen Pen Carter, though. Pen Carter's actually found FNS, so that Please is the one real there. guardian of that A site removed. This is a chance now for a plant. This could be much better for them. This could be a big seconds. chance, maybe seven, if they get it just right. Fragment finds nothing, but Marv does. Gets out of danger, but there's still a player in mid. Doesn't see Aspas. He was so paranoid about that for a while. As Ye's gone down, as Crashy's victor and Marv, how do you find these final players? I guess this readjust is going to make it even harder here. sassy has got the Hunter Fury, but he's playing so deep that Victor's ultimate, I don't even think, cancels it out just yet. No, I don't think so either. A tap on the spike. There it is, called in. Victor wants in, tries to push further. I don't think they can do, dig them out of these positions. I don't think they can do much about it. Victor's going to sit this, though. They've got the check on the defuse. He gets to halfway, but that's about all it's going to get as Marv. Going to try and back away from this operator to hand is valuable enough and Loud going to stay alive for another round. The cling to life here with a thrifty round win. Perfect execution, removing FNS so early and making perfect use of that space. He needed it so badly. Again, anticipating the old command coming through as well. And that's how it came through. Right. Do that again then. Completely, but and by the way, FNS was playing right side of Pyramid there. He's yeah. not even tucked up on his wall. Teleport's ready. That works. Looks like the double operator kind of is coming out here. I believe Marv's gonna pop the ult. So a new look for Optic. Technically can suit this map incredibly well. Those long lines of sight. Look where Pankard is playing. <laughs> and the ult as well. But no one actively watching Tube at the moment, so I'll be interested to see if that comes around in the end, because they're being hyper-proactive towards middle at the moment for Optic. Victor at least preemptively looking to use his knife here just as a information gathering tool. Ahead of any contact just yet. Crashy, easy clears. He saw it, <gasps> he's he saw it. Come through. Yep. He knows there's now problems. Victor needs to be on red alert. He's going to try and back away in time. He now knows what the plan is. They've found them. At least for now, it's FNS going to try and keep control, but they've broken through by the door. That's good work already. Oh, and a little sloppy from FNS walking back in. Panicato already had that. Yay. Can't find a way through. Crashy's locked out as well. The wall should facilitate the cross at least to get the spike planted. Yay. A little late on it, but he's going to get there in time. Crashy's did find Sadek, so it's not over yet, but retaking with his operators ain't going to be easy either. And there's the on the other side coming out. Viper bit to completely cut off one side here. Two snake bites available for less as well. Can Optic break through? It's still a 3v3. Have to make use of the time here. How do they clear this? Anything left in the kit? Not really. Less is going to play that time perfectly. A shoulder shown and a spray committed. Crashes as well. He found another. Yay! Found Panicata. And now it's just Less in a 1v2. But time, they've got to close this down fast. And Less. He, oh, he gets one of the way. But time. I don't know if they've got enough time on this. I don't think they do at this point. I think he's got it. No way. Yay! Yeah, he's got it! Yay! Are you kidding oh! me? <laughs> you cannot use the green wall against Optic! They get the defuse and they get the round! We get a pick, we move on. What a fumble! Sassy has two shock darts there as well. It's perfect from Optic to dig that deep, completely wrapping the Viper Spear. Like I said, they had to make use of time to get to the backside of that ultimate. Two snake bites, two shock darts. Oh, they had so many tools at their disposal. Ultimately, it's on Pancada there, really to take first contact. Sassy shouldering. They they gain nothing out of that. <laughs> There's no way this is happening. It's a timeout loud, a sweating bullet. They look frayed. They look panicked. They look like they've been pushed to their limits. That was flustered. That, 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 was that, flustered. that post plant there, I've got to say, they've dropped the ball massively. Yes, they massively. have. Massively. And that's something I wouldn't really put with them. They've always looked quite good so far in this tournament. I don't think they've looked pressured like this before. I'll be honest. I mean, even domestically here, it's, it's almost skewing the perception. Breeze, they usually, do, like, period, do not lose post parts. Like, it's, it's one of the biggest success factors for them on Breeze. So to see them, that, that was sloppy. That, that's like the pressure's on. Overthinking slightly. Yep. Eager to, to really be decisive and not allow 
optic to creep up closer and closer, but I gotta say, you just gotta stick to your guns there. Yes, you have you to, they had all the tools necessary to win that round, and they but fluffed it. <laughs> but again, how many times you brought out how young this roster is as well? Some of the players coming onto this stage, this is where those nerves happen. This is where that comfort that Optic has. You know, when I talk about FNS being a kingmaker, he brings out the best in these boys. He makes them thrive in these scenarios. And he's put them you on 11 to, to 7 play. right now. Let's and we go play. back into this. This is Loud's moment to try and find something. There's nothing left in the bank. This that acts even on a Bulldog here. Bulldog light shield. It's not pretty. It's really not pretty. They're going to try and get Sadak pretty deep in tube here to make use of his null command. In that AOE, way more effective. It's going to force Optic all the way out to the right side of default. Doing exactly that. Remove FNS's utility. Should open the front door here. Yeah, this this looks crunch looks perfect. Sadak's even found Marv. This is great. Good beginning. FNS. Oh, what? That shot is filthy. Takes down Aspas, has no right for it. Panic has to respect that. They have to respect this. Yay gets put down to 29 HP. Crashy's still trying to deny the plan, at least by a little bit of time here. Sassy's found victory in the meantime, though. Two now stand. Pancada is still holding the line. This is all on Crashy's now. It's done for. Good work from Loud. A resounding response in their dire, dire hours. Huge round to swing here. On the back of Sadak, like I said, it's going to force Marv into that very awkward position here, especially with FNS being suppressed. Yeah. You can see straight away they punish that. FNS lands a disgusting shot onto Aspas with the Spectre. I mean, dashing into nothing. There was, there was no safety there, there for Aspas to even survive, but mm -hmm. throws his life on the line. Loud convert their eighth. And it's so necessary. Three rounds. They've broken the money, at least for now, as well. There was nothing left for Loud. That was it. Was that the was a must coming win. out. What a critical moment in their story here today. But you can't underestimate Ye popping those knives out. Just push himself up a little deeper into towards shoot. Maybe trying to address this issue of players creeping through. We've seen this a couple of times now. They've been trying to make this play. Now Ye is going to put himself towards it. Pancada on the other side. Ye, does he clear it well? Yes, he does. Sharp, surgical precision. But it's only frenzies beyond that. A rifle did get recovered for Ye, but again, for loud. It's back to business. Take the site. Rifle dropped across. Yay. Delivers it. Post it up. Less so, so aware of the flank coming in, but the timing now. Victor holds. It looks like he's considering the chance of it, but the timing. Victor's been allowed a moment up and above. We go. They just don't land for Yay this time. Less again finds Victor. This is Loud doing exactly oh, what was needed. I got a little nervous. When Crashies does that, it's fine. It's fine. Loud are fine. To a life. Cool. Yeah, force three. Yeah, cool. 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 <laughs> force three repurchases here for Lau, but for Optic, obviously we know coming into that, not an awful lot to work with other than the Blade Storm. That's you see him marved. Throw the operator in the mix once again. Optic actually gonna call the timeout here because it's starting to get a little tense. Yes. Lau win this buy round. You've got to expect they're leaning towards tying yeah. this up. Absolutely. I, Which isn't a conversation we should be even be happening. No. I mean... I'm off script, man. I, I I didn't have my notes ready for this yet. It's another second half from Loud that's just... Yeah. And last time we what? In the OT? Yeah. It's getting closer and closer. These guys are truly resilient to the core. Don't know when they're well, done. I mean, you, you posed the see. question. This is the depth of optic here on Breeze being tested. This is, this is all on the fly, right? You've yes. got to assume it's all on the fly. And again, I'd say some of these players are great at that, but it is very hard to do that against a I mean, collective yeah, on who this plays stage. So again, when I, you're not even meant to win the map as well. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the difference, right? So it's like again for me, I'm just waiting for that penny to drop. The loud just go. All right, let's let's shut them down now. We've had enough of this. Let's let's just close out the game. But I'm like every single time there's that moment of danger. Now they've been able to at least roll around with the money coming back into their pocket. So there's a full purchase for Optic here and another chance to book in 12, which is bare minimum OT. Now on the other side for Loud, they do have a good buy coming into this. Alts, not quite there yet. But again, the rifles are at least in the right place. Here yeah, where Ye decides to post up. A bit of a switch up, actually. Mm. Yeah, Finesse trying to get away with... Uh, <laughs> again? Yeah, the same trick once again in the previous round, but this time... See, actually, he does set it up, so potentially we're here to try and bait somebody to clear it, but... Loud here, opt. Towards a more traditional setup. 
Three players towards mid here. It's the first time we've really seen Victor uh, potentially in a position to pop flash out. Grassy mm. should be able to feed him the information. With nothing there, it's sassy right spotted here. so deep it doesn't really tell them anything. It doesn't paint a picture here for Optic. No, it doesn't. They didn't even know Aspas at this point. So it's, it's not completely useless, obviously, but it really doesn't give you any of those finer details. Victor's still waiting. You can see there was still that moment of consideration. It's going to be Ye, though. This is a curveball, though. To have Ye posted up Rather here. Rather than FNS, that's yeah. a big difference. Yeah. And it's with the operator. He can dash away. FNS can reinforce that hold towards default. And actually, Victor in position to cut off the split. It's not going to come through, though. It's going to be the... Traditional here for Aspas and Sadak. They're going to try and walk tube once again. And that has been critical, though. They've been able to really deal with the player like FNS, who's been tucked in that corner. They've been, you know, getting that crunch down just right. Here comes that pressure. Flash goes through. Victor, is it your job to handle this? Left. Who's going to keep them safe here? 30 seconds. You've got to make your move loud because Ye's Fight still down. there. Yay's yeah, found less. FNS gets traded, but Crash is waiting on that cross up. Ye's gone down. This is the crunch. That pinch in play. Victor. It's it's 17 seconds loud. Get on the side. Get that spike That's down. Sassy keeps his life. and might have just kept hope alive. Marv now in the 1v3, Fight but the plant planted. is down, and this sh should be loud round. Position already considered, already being watched. Pancada shuts it out, How? and we're at double digits now. Louder back in this game. How did they manage to break that crossfire setup? Like I said, Victor holding on to basically denying the split from coming through. Yeah. There's two players from Loud on stairs for like 15 seconds. You noted it, the time was burning away. That crossfire setup was beautiful. From spawn towards boxes. And they, they, again, just give them a little pocket to play from. And they absolutely make it work. Aspas is doing everything he can for his side as well. 22 kills already. Highlight performance for him in my mind. Following up from the bind performance. Called it Very true. to ride that wave, the momentum. Victor. Victor. Victor, don't be doing lazy jump peeks here because Victor's going to find you. That's a rifle, and he's just going to get the hell away if he can. Run, boy, run. You got a free gun. And he's actually made it out scot free. That's a fumble. And probably a frustrating one at that. Yeah, he again posted up close contact. Different angle here. Does get cleared with the hour drone, though. Get away. Spam down to 20 HP, but no kill. Oh, still alive, as is FNS. But again, these weapons, they, they shouldn't be as much of a threat, but they're Look looking for a new option. To. I'm curious about what Marv is up to here, because he can just keep himself tucked in that corner. He's got his trap now. They will note that, obviously, middle is open, right? There's always going to be that consideration. And no TP available for him here. He's come down here again. Doesn't want to give away a sound cube. Oh, actually, with a broken. big flank That's on the Victor. Gone. That's massive. Yeah. That's a huge moment, but it is coming back towards that A site. It's kind of the double pump, right? So they've addressed that split. <laughs> yeah, he wants it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nah, Pankard is not letting go of this round. He's right in between them. Up the guts. Seconds okay, left. whiffed it. That's fine. FNS, no Surely way. Not. No Headshot way. Well. How is this a 2v2? This, this, this was a formality. Big I, HP advantage, though. Crash is down to 34. Marv does have the gone. light shield and the headhunter still. Crash is, did he get that upgrade? He's got the Vandal, Lauren. I, I, this feels so unnerving. Time, they need to spot some of these players out, and he gets no information for this. They're going in blind. Marv trying to clear through, pulling the attention towards him. Marv clear any of this. He has no idea where the players are, and none of them. <gasps> the so much damage! Oh, damn! The Aspas is down to 40! The four. Oh, he couldn't down. land the shot. Marv is out of it. 34 HP for Crashy. Sadak catching the cross. We're tied up. Loud aren't done yet. There is still a chance for them here. The awareness from Crashy's again, it's by the process of elimination. Finds so much damage there, unfortunately. I mean, if Marv actually swings ahead of that yeah. recon, there's a chance he finds that open sure. angle. Again, not waiting for the ping, but knowing that Aspas is going to look to destroy that. Marv has a window of opportunity to isolate that kill, but... Oh, I'm seeing the buy, Mike. The stars did not align. I'm seeing the same buy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess this is the all-in round, huh? are invested here. And Loud have been stepping up, and Aspas just unleashing straight away. He's going to cut through mid. We've got the double operator coming out, and look who's on the other side. It's going to be Victor, but only for a second. Aspas is just slicing them to pieces. FNS, you want some? Get some. Denies Aspas, pops the old, and shuts down the site. To run. Well, no, Fury actually to try and force FNS out of position here. No tank come through, but actually, Sadak in a perfect position. 
She doesn't find a kill. God, FNS is still alive. I don't know how, but Marv's connect towards the west. And now Pancada finds one back. Sadak as well responds, but FNS is still alive. Caught in the end. Sadak the hero. And now, yay. How much are you going to do? The flash comes in. Can he stay alive for a couple more seconds? No, Sadak. What a moment to find form, putting Lao to 12 and keeping their hope alive in this tournament. Optic look to dig their heels in with a double operator, but the pace shift from Loud. What a read, what a time to do it. Beautiful stuff. Aspas again, paving the way for Loud in some of these rounds. A Sadak landing shots like that. The confidence. It's a 2v1. He's fully swinging double doors versus Yay of with an people. operator. Now nah, this flash is fine, don't nah, worry, I'm all off. Good. Yeah. <laughs> He's on it. That's the one the coach is just sweating yeah. watching. Like, you want to play? Let's we'll talk about play. it later. <laughs> 12 to 11, we go back in. Loud do have the round advantage, but Optic are going walk about. Sassy's already dealt with one, but they didn't expect the ball. Yay! He's still fighting. They've taken down Aspas. He's got his ult as well. Hunter's Fury going to come on down. They spotted enough to send this. No tags. I don't see enough from it. Sassy's left on 20 HP. Th this could be it's OT. A, it's a 3v4. How is this a 3v4? They've lost Sadak and they've lost Aspas, the two critical players yeah. from that prior round. Light shields here for Optic, but Sassy, Les, and Pancada. To all the force available, Les will have the Viper's bit with the plant or a kill. Yeah, he's looking to deny that. Pancada going to find one. Stunning shot to bring this back down to a 3v3. It looks like they still want to continue towards the safe site. Players yeah, start to linger orb. around. Here comes the cross. Pancada gonna get there first. Take a little bit of safety. Victor on the other side. Playing back by Yellow. Two players here, Marv and Victor. High flash doesn't find much. Oh, Victor finds Pancada. And now the two on the side. Let's and now make it one. It's all on less in a 1v3 to try and deny this. Oh no, they've seen him. Crashies catches him. The defuse comes in. And of course, we are going all the way. You have got to be kidding me. <laughs> It's so back and forth. Optic to be the ones How? to be decisive How? here in, in this round, round. There's no right in that round with that purchase coming in. Somehow they get Ashbash, somehow they get Sadak down. Less as well. It, I gotta say it. Retrieve the orb. He has to use the Viper's bit yeah. early there. I agree. Early. Because he knows, he knows what the bigger picture is. Sure. Sassy dies to, I mean, he's so squishy, that shot yeah, yeah. wasn't even, it didn't even look that close. No, it they didn't. They still found the kill. 12, 12. I need this. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> I can't take this. And just so you know at home, loud have hit the timeout button. They need to be ready for this next half. This that's a tilter. That's a t If you're watching that, oh, I'm in from pieces. the top down view, you're I'm like. I'm in pieces. I'm broken after that. It goes to a 3v5, then it goes to a 3v2. <laughs> no, no, it's not meant to be. It's not meant to be like that. 12, 12. And this is what it's all about, ladies and gents. Everyone tuning in. The next couple of moments that these two teams make. Loud wins it, we carry on. We move ahead. It all spirals from there and all becomes possible. Roptic shut it down now. Two rounds to define. So much on the line between these two. Well, the flower got left. That's the question I'm, and I'm asking it here on Breeze. Right here. Didn't expect that sentence to be happening. Nope. Did not expect it. <sighs> okay, Optic gonna be coming back in on the attacking side and Loud on the defending side. And I think this was the one that shocked us, that Optic looked so good on this side. See if Loud are going to switch things up Kill towards Look at the Vatsy. Triple walk towards Tube, potentially. Or at least the Dark going to open things up. It's actually the knife sent through here. Optic will have a little bit of space to play with in mid. To see what the end goal is here. Lots of information early here, actually. Less spotted. Pankada not spotted on top of the pillar, though. He's got his TP back to safety. Back towards new box. Optic, uh, like I said, they have so much space to work with here. And Enemy mark. I don't seem to be unaware of just how dire things are in mid. I'm worried about. Surely Pankada. Pankada was spotted. It. Surely they realised there's a problem, right? I think the drone spotted the TP, so they knew he was no. up there. 
Oh, that's devastating, losing Alim so early. That's pulled rotations. There's still 50 seconds to play with here. Optic have the upper hand in this round. And it looks like they want to readdress this B site. Less caught in no man's land. He's down! And Optic have got the keys to the castle now. Spike and go completely uncontested at this point. No one can stop that. Oh, we open a 3v5. Aspas, Sassy, and Sadak have to find something here. Victor posted up, Victor. looking to punish this. You're going to hard clear this corner? No, not like no, that. No not chance. at all. Spray's what? gone a little astray as Aspas is going to catch oh it. God. But Marv, the safe pair of hands, finds Sadak towards CT and going to readdress that middle problem. As Ye's by his side as well. It's not, you're never remaining. fighting alone if you're an Optic. It's all together here. Sassy has at least got mobbed, but a 1v3. Sassy, I, the guy's good, but I don't know if he's this good right now. He's desperately trying, though, with everything he has. But time is becoming a problem as the clock begins to rot. Sassy has to just try and do something. And Optic swing together. It's 13. Found for Optic. And that's concerning because Optic looked so comfortable in some of these defensive rounds here. One Again, round. like I said, it's just such a minute detail. I think the TP is spotted on top of the pillar. Yeah. And all that space, no pressure, allows Optic to just walk up, literally shift walk and clear that angle. Optic actually gonna call the time out here. Let that round breathe a little bit. And actually allow the pressure to build for loud. Nasty timeout to be calling at this point. Staring down a barrel of a gun if you're loud right now. The optic just go full weird now. I mean, we saw we saw the <laughs> the aggression towards A main last time, which was I'll be honest, the first time we saw the scene, we've seen him switch up this A site hold a couple yeah. of times, but it's it's never been a great. They've not been there to kind of greet or pressure the orb. What do we see here from optic? Series point here on Breeze. Full creative Where we freedom. shouldn't be. Where no. we should not be. This was the rabbit hole, right? Like, how far down does it go? And we are here just full on embracing the madness. The scenes. The depth in which Optic have somehow pulled us to. And loud, resilient, sure. But now put in this position. One round to define it. Let's see what they've got. Yay again to be the solo anchor toward B site here. Loud stacked up. Aspas desperate here to find some control early towards bottom mid. Oh, no, actually, we have to find an angle here. Yeah, Optic kind of tucked in towards A site. Crash is just considering picking up the slack towards Tube, but we'll now re explore mid with the Al drone. As Loud are actually starting to drift towards B. Nothing noted here. Mm. So, yay. Does Crash he's, he's got to deliver. Support? I mean, it is still yay. And that is one man to hold back potentially four players. Do they swing mid? Same then gets to be said about potentially Crashies. Where does this lean? Loud. The blank canvas presented. Paint it how they desire. So, Victor just got his knife back. And it's only going to find one member on the back of it. Crash, he's actually suppressed here. That's going to hit the gas he's here. Pushing it. He's pushing it. Yeah, he's in danger, but Crash has his back. Going to find Sadak, put him to bed. As Jay still just trying to play his life. Keep himself in this. He knows he's surrounded. 30 yeah, what seconds. What can you do left. now? Surely you are cooked. Surely you are done for. Surely not. Still stands only for a moment. Good trade for Victor. And now three for Loud. That is all that remains. Oh, and damage the damage. on Sassy! Denial! Crashies! He's doing damage! And now a 2v2. Aspas and Pankata still standing, still fighting, giving it everything they have. And now mobbed. You it's want your to moment play. Let's play. in a 1v2. Spots the first, denied on the second. Loud, still alive. They flipped that one back in their favor. Switching Somehow. Side. Again, Crash is desperate to find some sort of comfort for Ye. To put him in a position to find something with the Operator. Then finds the Shock Dark Hill. On to Sassy, preventing I that thought plant it was coming. Done. I thought it was done. That it was wrapped up. at that point. I mean, especially with Le Les being removed there, they have Please. nothing to cut off any of these sight lines. And Pankata like pushing out like that. That's kind of like no man's land he's taking that fight in. So, of course, we go again 
Second no team. 13-13, these two teams, so hard to define between the two of them. Optic doing things Big in maps that they just shouldn't. Showing that diligence and loud and willing to lose. Not backing down just yet. Marv actually yes, he's the only one for Optic this time around to follow through towards top mid. Dealing with the trap, that's actually going to pull or at least keep loud with this three-man setup towards B. Aspas, though, look at where he's managed to get himself to. This is a lot of information just on the back of Aspas's position. But he could all turn on a dime. I mean, I'm, I'm just wondering if VA even considers it. Like, when's that timing, that internal clock Sadak, hit? I don't think he does. Sadak can't fall in this position again. He's no. been isolated here previously. I was a little worried that they might dip for that double door, or like, you know, the mid door kind of push. Not the case. Does all that V hits coming in. So this should actually work quite nicely for Loud. They are in the right place for this. They've got somewhat the right rotations. The only issue to me is that Ye could maybe cut off rotations en route. Or do they hit the pump back I was say, A? Optic have been so quick in these left. audibles. There might have just been enough. Look at where Ye is on the door. Sadak and Aspas need to hold this down. There is a time limit on this. They need help, but they need it now. Les finds Marv, but FNS quickly removes Sadak from the site. Spike to come in, but do they note this player? Aspas now gets seen. Doesn't get handled. He's still a threat in the back lines. Not a lot of damage either. No, absolutely not. And Ye going to try and readdress the problem towards you. Sassy on the drive-by. Quick as ever. Victor now paranoid about it, and rightly so. Problem signed him out. Optic looking a little surrounded with only three of them alive. Les and Sassy trying to play through all those double doors together, but you can see the crossfire being trying to be constructed. FNS denies Aspas. And now Crash is actually the a decent pit. spot to catch this cross. And you're right, the Viper's Pit. They've suddenly got a new right way to defend this. Crash is just trying to play the time. Try and buy a little bit of moment here. And FNS, how are you still doing it's this? too late. No way. FNS, unbelievable scenes. The Kingmaker himself does it all himself, and Kana just has to sit back and watch. Optic strike first again. Wow, what a hold. They're Pushing able to side. literally hold Mouth Loud push. out of that sight for so long. By the time Aspas actually re-aggresses, it's Work. all but done. It's all but done for Loud. It takes them an eternity to get back here. Yeah. And the Viper's Pit coming through. Beautiful. To seal the deal. What a huge round from FNS. In the 11th hour here for Optic. Oh, he heard the call and he replied. <sighs> and one more round again. We go again. And Loud last time were able to dig deep enough. They have to do it again. They still have to keep finding the next step. Tested. Round after round. What's the option now? That's a good Thank spot. Up. Be the one to create any sort of aggression, but Ye hasn't been drifting out here. He's been hard anchoring with that operator, enabling Optic to have four bodies towards A so quickly in some of these defensive rounds. It's looking as if that is the end goal here for Loud once again. Enemy tag. Operator noted, but not really going to tell Loud too much. No, not, not a great deal. Other than don't hit B. Sure. I think that's that's a valid call. Screen down. And as for Optic, though, got to be aware that the Wolves are at the door. Big jump spot there for FNS. He's seen a lot, and they've got to know what's coming their way. Marv to strike first towards Sadak. And actually, Victor tries to play a little ahead of it, but Aspas already on the site. And now you can see the crunch through middle. Pancada, perfect timing. Left. And now the four stand. Oh, Goliath crashes. Yay, Marv. Anything up the sleeve. Any more tricks to pull out? Jay starts to address the site. First fight found for Crashies. Quick turn, didn't note anyone towards double doors. Yay! No way, Marv as well! And El Pancada! Tournament life in your hands. Optic on the verge, and it's all but over. It's all but done! Optic Gaming build their legacy brick by brick. The green wall of Optic make Reykjavik their own. What a performance here. Flipping breeze. Which Unreal. everyone said when they saw this veto, that was Loud's chance to turn this back in their favor. Rising to the occasion, every member of this team, 100%, every single member of this team, that looked fantastic today. Aspas gave it his heart, gave it his heart and soul in this last map. Optic still come out on top.
you can't take it away from some of those players on Loud. They fought tooth and nail for that. But the depth in which we saw Optic go to was something none of us would have expected. Boys on the screen there, fighting with everything. All that heart, all that will, all that drive. The lower bracket run, Mike. Yep. You don't back. see it. You do not see that often. Like I said, Optic don't lose twice. And they prove it here, a clean sweep in the grand finals. Just incredible stuff from these guys. I mean, yay, El Diablo himself, man. The surgical precision this event, being the tip of the spear and the back line for Optic. Victor, who's turned the new leaf for this event. I mean, we're talking about Lanimals. Sure. What a performance from him. The second coming of Victor almost. They would be the catalyst for so many of Optic and their pace changes. Absolutely, and again, Everything we've seen from Optic throughout this tournament has been just illuminating. We saw glimpses of this in the past. They got denied by Mech. It was kind of a crushing defeat. I thought that was going to haunt them, genuinely. I was a bit worried getting towards the finals, those deep runs in tournaments. That could have been another issue. They've proven me wrong. They've proven everyone wrong. A 3-0 final. Wow. I didn't think we'd be saying this. I said this either goes right. a distance, uh, but seeing this, seeing yep. this happen now, uh, I mean, it's such a huge credit to how Optic have performed here in Reykjavik. Absolutely. You can see on the screen, every single one of those players for Optic just put up a peculiar performance here. Wonderful scenes for them. And on the other side, Loud, of course, a great attempt. But I don't think you can stop them right now, though it just felt like it was meant to be for them. Absolutely. Absolutely was. And again, just to credit once again the recovery factor for Optic at this event. Sure. Again, roll your minds back to that opening series, the Zersha series. This isn't the same team. They literally reinvented oh. themselves here. And credit really to Chef Chet, honestly. Yeah. The, the newly crowned King of Cringe here, hey. coming up with some of the wackiest stuff we've seen from any team on this stage in Reykjavik. Uh, just fantastic from start to finish. And I do feel as though this whole thing, this entire tournament, we've seen such brilliant moments from the Zeta run to Optic standing here, righting the wrongs of their past, finding what they needed to get them across the line. And I think coming into this, they were one of the favorites, but man, they show grit and determination now. They, they absolutely did. And I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to really pick out anything that even from the losses they've had here, it's it's so refreshing to see. Uh, again, I'll, I'll come out and say it, an NA team to really learn on the fly like this at an event, sure. for things not to crumble and fall apart. I mean, again, the, the other key component for me is FNS. How many times have we talked about him and being able to flip you know, individual maps and series as a whole? Like, it cannot be underestimated just how deadly these guys are when they're in the zone. I'm just, I, I'm, I'm very happy for them because I think you're right. North America got kind of given a, a bad hand at times, being credited as, you know, oh, the region that, you know, they just don't have that work. Yeah, they've not yep. seen that way, you know, and they've just been proven wrong. Anyone who's ever said that, look at Optic, tell me this run was not just the accumulation of hard work. However, uh, the, one of the tough questions for you guys at home is the MVP poll. Go get your predictions through. I don't know, man. I, I don't know. Where, where would you go for? I mean, this this for me is a tip of the hat to FNS. Uh, he should definitely take it I today. Like, that. Oh, like a little bit of a stroll, a, a stumble here and there, but it has been a fairly flawless run, right? But very small data sample. That, that's the only thing I'll preface that with. And Optic have shown us their recovery factor time and time again at this event. Perfect. I want to expand on that, but we are live. There's no waiting around. Welcome to the grand finals. It's Optic on the defending side. And of course, that means Lau will be on the attack. And we get to finally see what this looks like. Tangible results after all that theory craft. And all that chip Look damage. The, damage. the absolute state of them, the walking wounded. You've got Les, Sadak, and Aspas. All now chipped down and crashies continuing to be a problem. And look how proactive they're getting in mid here as well. Optic wanting to push a little further. I love that as well. The smoke comes through just as there's no contact elsewhere. That's the swing through market. Again, they're all so tacked oh, up. Look Victor. at this. Victor for two. He's playing further ahead. Victor and yay. The combination deadly. And a flawless beginning for Optic. Get things started. But that chip damage at the start. Crashies just did so much to them. Absolutely massive, and actually, this is to consider that Optic have had a terrible pistol round success ratio this event, and actually previously versus Loud. I mean, the only two they won were on Fracture, which was just 
Well, there's a reason. We write that. We write that. There's off, a reason right? it's we, not we, in this meter. Ex exactly. Right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they've they've commanded that respect. But let's also talk about this map here because this should be a, a, a limited buyback in for for loud. I don't think we're going to see too much. I'm seeing a frenzy in the sheriff. If it starts going astray, we'll we'll pay more mind. But we've seen optic on this map look really good. And actually, hold on, they're going for a little bit of a walkabout here. This is keeping my attention. There's already Aspas trying to be a nuisance, but handled well enough and not too much garnered off the back. So, again, historically, when we look at this map, what have we seen from Optic coming into this? And the same question, I guess, then goes to Loud. Well, the big change is uh, obviously very early on in this event, when Miles switched over to the Omen, it, it kind of set them up for, I mean, what we've just seen there, like a couple of small set pieces just to try and isolate a first blood, contest these orbs in particular. I think it might be a trend set in here. Again, a lot of fear around that one way smoke outside A main. This time around, actually able to isolate Aspas, so it will take a little bit of a bite out of the execution. Yeah, Marv could get caught, but he sets off the smoke perfectly. Very nice. Composed for Optic, and again, you, you look at Loud's expectations and wants from this round particularly. They're on that lighter purchase, so you're, you're hoping for the best and probably expecting the worst, really. And maybe, a, you know, maybe get a couple of kills, force them to reinvest. But we've also seen the other look to Optic to an extent in my mind as well, is that Ye got quelled. He got, you know, really pushed down a couple of times, counted left. on some of his aggression a little bit here and there. So I do want to see how they look going forward because I was really enjoying watching Loud play this earlier on. I got to, you know, catch back up on that, really spend some time going over it. And to me, Pancada was fantastic at being a, a threat and a nuisance. So again, that Marv Pancada battle going on the Omens, lovely concept in my mind. For now, still trying to make something happen here. And it is going to be cleaned up. So comfortable stuff for Optic, not feeling too phased, and for Loud going through the motions. Interesting, and we have seen a few examples. Isolated instances, yes, but of Ye being played out of games, right? Just be, it's Correct. almost like the scene head effect, right? It's like, avoid where he is. Yep. Don't don't go where don't we know Ye's going to be. And again, all of that's very slow early round just to identify where the operator is or if there's any aggression. Yep. Obviously, I mean, the other big indicator is how reliant Optic are on, on kind of setting up Ye and these support systems, obviously, with Victor on other maps. But see if there's going to be any aggression here. It doesn't look as if, actually... Any, any point of contest actually here from where Loud has set up a much more traditional default. They will be noted. So no dash here actually, even if it finds a kill. But oh, to it, and the swing's perfect. I Sassy there spike. just takes him out of the game very early and does get a little bit of damage himself off the back, but he'll take that. And again, such an early pick. One minute, 20 seconds still on the clock here for them to play with. But there is a double stack towards short, so that could be a conundrum to face. You can see Marv trying to fill the void. Pops himself up on short. Surely to be cleared. Oh, this is good though. If he finds the kill, he can TP away and then Victor can pick up the slash. They're actually going to flash in here. Really like the engage on that, and Victor does deliver. It's had it gone down, and they're going to just Beautiful. deal away. That's, that's dreamy stuff. And now that early damage that came through towards Sassy actually becomes a problem. That's when your Spectres, your Marshals will actually do really well. Look at Aspas, look at Sassy. They are down lower on HP, so they've got to be a bit more cautious and be very careful with the next couple of steps because Optic have suddenly got a little bit more in the pocket now. I mean, Almost feels like an advantage. Aspas and Sassy down to 21 and 24 HP. Another oh, attack coming through huge. as well. This is huge. Great work from Aspas to stem the bleeding on hand. Flash Victor wants to get a little feisty with it. And yeah, it does. Lovely work from Victor. Pancada's still standing, though, and it is a 2v2. Left. So this should, should be contained. But they're just so willing to fight on this one. Oh, should come through now. Crash, he should be able to find himself an upgrade, though. If he doesn't find anything from heaven, he's going to The enemy. timing's perfect from Aphilis. An optic. That's the beginning for the boys there. They will be loving that. Converting the bonus. That round should not have been theirs. The early chip damage, everything teeing them up to close down the round. The sort of adjustment I was talking about. They're not afraid to get proactive. They're given 20 seconds to kind of formulate a plan. And it comes through there and they do a ton of damage and find a kill on the back of that. Again, it's forcing Aspas to be a little more defensive on the entry. I mean, the, the timing here on the recon bolt as well is so important. To find that second kill from inside the smoke, it's just beautiful. Are we going to get FNS popping off as well? I mean, the guy's already been hailed enough as, you know, that in-game leader, the, the, the brain of I mean, the bunch. If he's fragging too, that's when uh, it gets scary. No, man, like like we don't, you don't need to add that in. Okay, hey, it's early days. All right, we've got a best of five. We're going to just, you know, we're mellow. We're relaxed for now. We have a bit of a force up coming out. Uh, yeah, maybe not. Out. A little bit of something to it. But again, keeping it simple. We're going to go for that V piece already. You can see Optic respecting that enough to sit deep on Bowhouse, make them kind of work for their dinner. And information now does get revealed, but the gap already closed. So FNS is going to try and find an angle, but the flash is very good, but it does catch enough of Sadak as well. So for now, Optic 
still holding down. for the back side. Les is the only one to really connect so far for Loud, but they have at least got a step towards the site here. Backline's being addressed. Les, that's the big shot though. Pancala makes this almost feel possible. As the upgrade comes in, Les has the spike not too far away. Can he find a singular fight though? He needs to avoid that for one. Uses the turret to try and close in towards the site. Gonna go for the plant. You've heard Mark too far away. He dips back in. Ultimate. He's gonna pop that down. The map, man. This is madness from left, 17 HP, and he is willing to throw us down seven seconds. They have to make the move within it. A couple more, and they have to make the play. What does he do with this? The spam comes in, and the reveal. It's dealt with well, and Optic play as a collective. There's no individual fights on that. They timed it nicely, good spacing, and they made sure that was converted. But you can see the danger in Loud in that round. Absolutely. It's almost desperation to try and convert that. The damage is done, but almost around too late here. Mm. So now in a four-round deficit, but uh, again, I credited Marv last time we saw Optic play on Ascent, just his supportive utility, the smokes, the one way that comes down onto stairs, the paranoia towards lane, the timing is perfect. I mean, the only thing actually that, that, that kind of makes that more difficult is Sadak actually landing a perfect flash to force both players back yes. off off of these angles. I think you heard a little bit of it in the last round as well. Yay, of course, upgrading to that operator, so that will be something now that Loud has to deal with, keeping... I wouldn't say the back of the mind, when it's when it's Yay, it has Standing to be the ahead. forefront. So, less of the map will be... Freely accessible, but you can see the approach beginning towards that A site. Optic almost anticipating a set piece towards A here with FNS. He's got he's got his utility basically invested to punish Aspas if he's looking to dash in either direction. And Marv actually playing close contact as well. Shadows traveling. It's been interesting. He's got himself a deep smoke here. Yeah, give himself a little bit of room to work with. But it is got a time limit on it, and you can see it literally tick over on the second. Yes, he has to pull back, flash through. Does get caught by it, but he's going to at least pop a smoke down, so he's buying time here. The turret not going to be able to do anything with this just yet. Less has to respect it. This is great schoolwork coming out from Optic. Yeah, actually, Victor popping the ult as well. So it's really going to take a lot of the clock away, actually, from Loud. A little bit of a bait TP as well, but you should hear the reset on that nonetheless. Yeah, this is getting a little awkward here because there's four players from Optic now ready to greet this. Well, now just have to go back to basics almost just the gun at the side and Aspas going to show him how it's done but he's taking a whole lot of damage. Sadek still stands and still finds work but FNS deep tucked towards hell. They found Grashies. FNS on the site still doing work and look who's remaining. Not Diablo himself in a 1v2. Pancada and Sassy though. Comfortable enough for a plant here. He finds the kill, he's got the blade storm as well. So he does, but we have to wait to see if that's a possibility. He's got to break his wrist oh, if he wants it. Oh, Not gonna happen. Oh. Sassy well composed, and we have to kind of let's talk about that round because it felt like it changed hands a couple of times. On the first approach, it felt like, you know, Loud was looking fine, and the stall work coming out from Optic was great. But then the site take actually worked out still for Loud. Sure, yeah, I mean, it's a shame, actually. Like I said, this setup here from FNS is designed, it's literally designed to stop Aspas from finding a safe dash towards Dice or towards Jen. It does a ton of damage. They unfortunately can't close that kill before he's already found the entry, right? So it's a real shame. And again, actually, Victor even popping his ult there just preemptively to slow down the hit. It almost actually creates enough time for Loud to really reconsider their approach. But great composure from Loud as well. Being able to re-engage like that after having so much thrown at you, beautiful work. But Ye wants to get a little bit of map in his control. Yeah, he's going to walk about to the J. So of course it's going to work out well. Pancada going to have to just suck that one up. There's not much more to be said. But the spikes left at the top of the middle, and that worries me slightly. Marv now going to note more players looking towards middle. Aspas going to pop knives out as well. And they have to kind of reconvene to get that spike back. They have to take a little bit of time to do so, just in case that Ye was lingering around potentially, but obviously not. FNS is posted for this lockdown on B site. That's on the other side. Sadak, one away from his ultimate. I'm not sure he'll be able to retrieve it here, but that could be key considering Ye doesn't have a weapon here. He'll be left with just a classic in hand. That'd be huge. Really. Trying to clear out towards Wine. Probably the right call there. Well, the conscious like just because Ye's showing such deep presence. You, you have to you have to clear meticulously. You, you've, you've lost a little bit of the, you know, the information play. Now already Aspas going to get further ahead. There's a lovely flash. The Porsche off the angle and Al-Sadak at least getting a step forward. That's gorgeous work from Aspas towards Marv. Yay yeah, still stands! And Yay delivering again and again. That's three already this round. Left. They've actually got the lockdown here as well, so they can fully reset. Yay's done the damage here. They have a man advantage and the lockdown for the retake. He still wants in. There it is. There's the investment. Look at the time. There's no, what can you do with this? 17 seconds. Plant's going to come in. Unless he's in such an annoying spot. Has to make a run for it. Gonna get himself out towards the backside of wine. Just about. They've let them pass. They have. 
if you like to get it halfway. FNS on guard duty, gonna get one. He's not stopping, yeah, he is not stopping! <laughs> Come hell or high water, El Diablo will always be dangerous. This guy pops the knives, gets hyper aggressive at the start, sits super deep on the side. How do you close him down when he's in that form? But he dials back perfectly. It's Literally balance. the perfect timing to pull away from this. And two crucial kills here. And like I said, FNS comes through with a lockdown at that point. 20 seconds left on the clock. It's it's borderline an unwinnable round for Loud. So let's, okay, let's take a step back, right? We've had a couple of rounds, a couple of gun rounds coming in. We've seen the pistol. We've seen a little bit of a, a sample platter of what's potentially to come. Let's talk bigger picture, because this is a weird buy. There is a hero rifle coming out and a couple of guardians, so we will pay mind to it. But I do also take stock of what we've seen so far, because we're sitting at quite a commanding scoreline here. We are, but this, this for me, this last round was another example where Optic's are. big win condition, right? It's finding these free first bloods, untraded. It gives them time to set up. There you go, go to plan B, plan C in some of these rounds. And that's where they've really excelled this, this event, honestly. Now, it looks like maybe Loud are exploring new options. We've seen some very site-centric hits, very dedicated towards A. Now we've got a little exploration towards the middle, but it could be because this purchase is far from perfect. So, again, it looks like a little exploration. We saw this against Optic before, and it, it did work, but it did seem as though Optic, of course, do have next layers to this. And already, information aplenty. Not ideal, but already going to try and close in. Less happy to lead this as a vast, vast with him. They've got a good surround on the side, but they're not yet quite breaking in to be able to get that spike down, and there's still three players potentially to clear. So, but it's a 5v3 there. Have the advantage here to play trades and crashes will be called upon. He's actually going to get picked out. It's an absolute Good. shutdown though. FNS and Ye looking comfortable. Give them just enough room. As Ye still backside the, the composure of every piece of this. They were knocking on the door. They, they were halfway in the site and Optic look unfazed by it. Almost like crashes falls and, and it's almost like that's the plan, right? We come through, we just lay one up to be taken and Victor's there once again with great utility. The flash coming through is perfectly timed for that swing from backside loud. I mean, there, if, if I was going to say, the timeout should be coming pretty soon because yeah. I'm not seeing anything tangible that they can hold on to here so what to apply we... to a different round, Lauren. Right, so what have we seen work against Optic on this map? Because they haven't been flawless in the past. Here, let's roll our minds back to any of the games we've seen either at this event or leading into this event. What have we seen work against them? Obviously, the notable one would be Ye being controlled here, but we haven't just seen you know, Ye doing those sort of things. That was a, an, one example of a very good round, of course. But bigger picture, how can you address what, what's going on here? Because, again, it looks like Loud don't have answers yet. No, and I think if we look back to the previous, <laughs> the second half was what does basically decided ascent, right? That was sure. uh, obviously Optic coming out with an advantage in the first. and. I won't say it took Loud a little longer to get online in the in the first half, particularly in their attack. It, it, it felt a little flat, I'll be honest. It was actually defense where they were to dig their heels in, play really, really solid sight holds, and, and that was what Optic struggled with. Here, the concern for me is that I haven't really seen Loud come into this with a, with a breath of fresh air. They, they haven't really come and applied anything new to this just yet. Um, and again, already we're seeing the right the right movements from Optic to, to kind of take the bite out of Aspas on some of these hits. Yep. Again, the adjustment of utility on the side of FNS and the way in which they're playing around, burning up this 10 seconds and then it comes through with a flash, a paranoia or something. Optic are ready to re-aggress at exactly the right time. I mean, even just on the scoreboard alone, FNS 10 to 2, I mean, that's okay, 10 to 2. This is almost beyond the point. And again, Crash is a 1 to 3, but it's again, keep in mind the amount of damage <laughs> yeah. you've done. Exactly, he has been present every round. On the other side, I don't think anyone's above 5 kills yet. They, they have been just not quite finding what they need. Again, the economy has been fantastic now for Optic. They're starting to really build a bank and the lovely that's high beautiful. flash. Look at that, Victor sets himself up for success, but it's marred by his side. Who's going to get the two kills? Aspas and Sadek, and a little switch up of pace here coming off the back of that tactical timeout. They're going to just turn the screws on him. They're taking the fight right back to them. And Optic demonstrated they're happy to go hunting on the defensive side. Yes, it's marved, they lose, but it's two kills on the back of it. And it's Aspas again. Mm. The tip of the spear, fall out. Yeah, now going to be in a position once this round slows down a little bit, he can post up and should be rewarded with a kill. Is he going to hold back towards mid as Loud are going to drift his three towards B main? But again, they've got bodies in the right place once uh, once Loud creeps through here, and it's going to have to be slow. They have to pass Ye and this utility. But I still love the fact that it's FNS who's filling the void on short yeah. here, right? He's keeping so much information, allowing Ye to be a little bit freer to be able to kind of get there. It, it, potentially two there, I think. Sussy and maybe less, both noted. Left. So that's enough to pull everyone over anyway. FNS can still hold mid in case there's a late rotation or something happens. But again, look at the time being bought here. The clock is an opponent for Optic in this, and they are just playing it perfectly. 
Shot goes astray for Ye, but it's fine. He's still holding position. Pressure. It's going to be the crossfire that holds. Yep. And it's no so beautiful. resilient. Optic are no playing one. a near on flawless game here, Mike. And this is something I did not expect. I thought Loud could be disruptive, be a, a nuisance, be a problem, be explosive, bring that Brazilian style. And right now they're being folded. Just again, they come through, like I said, they lose Marv, but it's two kills. And it's two massive kills for them. And the thing is, FNS has his utility cover in mid, he's covering short, then he has the nano swarms basically on Ye's contact. This is the late round contingency here for Optic. As soon as he finds contact in B main, even if Ye misses that shot, mm. two nano swarms are going to buy so much time. So much time for that rotation to come through. Spike retreat. I'm waiting for the answer because 7 1 is condemning. And I do want to talk about what this implies now for the greater you know, run think. of things now when we look at that best of five. Because I think this map was a bit of a swing map. A lot of people having confidence here in loud on this map, looking like a firm, you right know, here. I guess, pillar of their game plan. And if this is the form that Optic are coming out with, that changes a little bit here. However, it's not over yet. A double walk on A. That's true. Oh, thank God. Uh, that's a tee up. That's going to be fine. Finds Victor, wants another. He's so ready for a moss. That's well enough here, but FNS can hear this cross. But he knows there's a trap on the other side. He's so aware of this man. He's got two! Oh, two! How do you get two off of that? Oh, he's just absolutely unleashing today. That's two big kills. That's going to keep this round somewhat feeling safer. As already Crash is closing in. Going to take the spike away from them. And it's just Aspas left in a 1v2, and it's not happening. It's A1. This scoreline is just running away from them. They're getting absolutely shut out here. I mean, I came back to what I was saying earlier. There's nothing tangible that Loud can apply from any of these rounds. The Optic haven't got an answer for. Again, we've got a total switch up here yeah. of the way in which they're looking to hold on to short. Yes, a little bit of a fumble from Victor with the flash, but Marv good for the trade. They never, ever feel as if it, it's slipping through their fingers. This is, this is scary. Terrifying. one scary. This is terrifying. This is, you know, <laughs> the beast that makes the noise in the night. I mean, this, is the, this is the big worry now because I... Well, just to put it in perspective, round 10 <laughs> last time it was 5-5. Sure. Five, five. Yeah, a bit different, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit different. A little bit different. And what have they been coming up with in the lab? Optic have been working. And do you know what? This I, I, People question you know, the North, North American work, I think, when it comes to esports especially. They critique it time and time again. But these boys have been putting in hours. You can see it so clearly. So credit to them already for this. I think they had a really early reality check at this event. Yeah. And it's actually paid dividends for them. That's a huge wake-up call. For now, though, it looks like Loud trying to make something happen on short. But again, look at the read. It is unfathomably good. How are they reading this so well? Optic are so in their heads. And Loud have to back away. You, you, what are you going to do? You're, you're, you're stuck in a halfway choice. You might get detained if you're not careful. They do get out in time. But again, the time purchased. We're down to 40 seconds now. They read the whole game plan. They're going to hear all of it. It was a lot of utility burnt up. But right place, right time. And I'm surprised they swung a player over off the back of that. They might start doing that now as a lot more utility comes in. FNS will be suppressed, but he's still left. fine. He's, he seems to be good for at least one at this point. So ready on the side. Flash comes in. Victor goes through. Does his best impression. Oh, I thought he had two there. Not to be. They keep their lives. Aspas still standing. Player tucked towards hell. His mom gets himself out. Has a little look. Does he see anything for now? And look at who's waiting. Yay. Has a couple of options. Takes one. Ten seconds left. Player with him in the 2v2. Sprays in. It ain't clean for the swing from Crash. He's trying to capitalize on the time, but that's... A little uncomfortable and loud, stabilized for just a second. It gets really chaotic there. It's almost like Marv actually has the get out of jail free card yep. there. I'm not sure if he was looking to cancel his TP, maybe in timing with Ye in heaven. Unfortunately, it crumbles there. Again, it doesn't feel comfortable. Nope. That's not something that I think Loud can come back to, because we're just going to see another uh, another switch up on the defense here. Again, this could be the one where, yeah, he's going to dig a little, little deeper mid in work. mid because there's been space to find. And Optic have actually towed the line. They haven't really we had dipped one their round. toes yet. We exactly. had one round of Ye going exploring, but now this could be the next look at it, right? Because he's got the supporting act there. He's got FNS by his side. You're going to have that swing player on short. And FNS tries to walk mid. Walking mid. Nah, not going to happen. He had so much faith in Ye, but the angle was just a little bit too deep. So at this point, he has to fall back. He's left down on minimal HP. And yeah, he gets left a little bit to his own devices. That's key, though. If FNS is the first to fall in this sort of game plan, oh, uh, but that's it. Yeah, he's backfilled this. He's 
on the other side and oh. look at them. They're ready to look post up. This. No way. The underhand. A little gift sent from the gods. Spike Victor and Marv went out on the extremity. They've read the play so well. The spike gets dropped and Marv still sticking around. Backs away to buy time. Oh, God, but Ye's already leading as well. Ye's flanking them already. Ye is backfilling this one. Another underhand goes in. Marv is just playing the clock right now, buying more and more time for Ye to close in. Step by step. He's even going to commit to wine. In. He's committing to wine on this. Sadak, Ashbas have to clear this because look who's lurking. It's going to be Yay from the back lines. And he's still finding shots. And he's still being a problem. As only one stands in its Aspas. And he does not feel safe. He has players just about everywhere. He would have to go hero mode if he wants to save this round. It's just beautiful left. to watch. And now Aspas, like I said, in an unwinnable position here. The 1v3, not even going to find the first hurdle. Yay will close it out. What a round from Optic. Again, they find actually Last pressure on the other side of mid, and they still decide to re-explore it. And look at the reward. Wow. I mean, they are literally reading loud down to a T. And the timing of this re-aggress as well. Oh, Spike down. Unbelievable. This is this is really something to watch. Optic literally have Spike their finger down. on the pulse right now. Uh, loud can find remaining. nothing across the map. No, it's shut out. Doors are closed. Go on, boys. It's you know, it's getting late. 9-2, this is map one. We will discuss what this means for the bigger picture if it closes out in this similar fashion. There's always a chance for Lautio to pull that scoreline back in, but this half has not shown us any indication of that. However, I like this fast mid adjustment. It looks like FNS is ready again. He's in the right place, right time for it. And they just don't expect it. He's still dealt with Sadak. He turned away from Aspas, but now the lockdown is going to come in. And yeah, he's going to over, over push. And he does go down. Great trade from Aspas, who is the only one trying to do this right now for Loud. Putting in a great performance. Three of them still alive. It's Crashies and Marved on the other side. HP's a little low, but they have the numbers. One goes in. Oh, the snap from Crashies! Someone check on that man's wrists. The sassy now. The spike has to do it all on his own. And the information play coming in. Sassy though, he's closing in. A nice amount of HP to work with, but he's still got a chance in this. They have no idea where he's at right now. They've set up the crossfire. Does it hold? Sassy walks in. He's found an optic. All oh, looking formidable. A 10 to half is exceedingly impressive. Marv again, again from the back lines, a carbon copy here for this B-site retake. The one way on lane, crashes goes huge to find his first two, but the paranoia comes through and it doesn't allow a 1v1 to present itself from Sassy. It's so huge, so huge. I need Loud to wake up. I need them to get a fire burning underneath them. Desk, what do you think they need? I can't wait to hear about what you guys have to say, what they need, but it just feels like every time we're at Reykjavik, Ice and Doug, there is something in the air for North American teams. There's a bit of magic here for them. Yeah, there are a lot of things going very well for Optics. You start off right at the beginning, they won the pistol. They struggled in pistols against Loud in their last dance. This is already a big change. And then if you take a little bit of a, a trip down history lane with Optics particularly, they don't lose rematches, right? They didn't <laughs> lose their rematch to the guard. Yeah. They didn't lose their rematch to Zersha, and now this. Yeah, and I also have to point out FNS is just fragging. This guy is a monster. And I always like to say this, when your IGL is fragging, that means he has the pulse on the game. He knows what is going on. The amount of reads <laughs> yeah. that you see this guy make are unbelievable. The preemptive lockdowns, there's so much going well, and I think it all starts from this guy on your screen. I completely agree. I mean, you saw it in the game against DRX. You saw it in the game yesterday against Zeta Division 2. When FNS has his finger on the pulse he can just take over and it doesn't mean necessarily he does it but you have these little set plays where it just works gorgeously yeah i mean this round for example there's a drone following up when they clear that with a flash so gorgeous just wipe the floor with it and then fns comes in with the perfect timing as well to clean up the round the following round as well i mean a couple rounds later yay has his knives and he's updrafting gets put in that position because marv is flashing early they have a bunch of i mean obviously it pops off but there's these moments where they're just going for this early aggression and it's working out in dividends. I, I mean, you said this when we're watching the game, Bala, but there are things that Optica bring to the table we haven't seen before. Sure. Yeah, there's a couple mid flashes that Victor's throwing that are new. I mean, there's a lot, I think, uh, especially just the way that FNS is playing with the setup. They won one round on attack last time, but they barely need any more than that. I think this is going to be doable <laughs> for them. Uh, well, they, they will need a, just a couple, right? Just I a think. couple there, uh, SciShow. Uh, let's toss this back to Pansy and Hypoc and see how this game is going to be closed out. It's the ultimate question, isn't it? Does it go with this kind of landslide that we've seen already from Optic? 
or can there be that spark to ignite loud? I want to see more resilience. I think most of us have actually enjoyed a very perfect approach to the defensive side for Optic. I think as just a fan of the game, you'll love that half. But I want resilience. I want a little bit more magic from that loud side. I want them to wake up. So we have the time to do it. Flip this pistol round back. Said they did win both pistols last time, but conceding the first half. Got to right their wrongs now. Aspas looking to get a little feisty, actually, towards mid. Mars, is it, I mean, Marv's waiting for this. I think in position to greet any sort of aggression, maybe on the back of this B main contact to see if anybody looks to backfill Optic. It's just how long do you hold that? Because it's not just him there, right? You've got Victor as well, kind of leading that A side. So it is just this three-man play, oh. so it's a lot to pull over. Victor over here with a flash as well. Yeah. So we'll see what the actual game plan is. Oh, you can see Pankata just... Pankada, do you know what's on the other side? That, that's beautiful from Pankada. Cover going Huge out. kill. Massive kill. It looked like the rotation was the intention as they're going to be leaning around towards that tree side. Four of the players down for Optic. Working their way through. And Loud shutting the door on this A1. None of what they're trying to sell. Aspas going to keep them busy. Going to fall away to a safer angle. As Optic, what are you up to, Marv? You're getting real dangerous on this. And this is a shutdown. Loud waking up. And that is what we need to see. Four standing, a good read, no over peaks, no over pushes, no falling foul to little traps. That is what the doctor ordered. And say composure here on the side of Loud. You can see Aspas considering. I mean, you throw the sheriff into the pistol round, you're, you're looking to make that work early on, but again, Marv just looking to bait a little bit with the TP here. It's unfortunate. But nonetheless, Loud with the underwater watch party. <laughs> but they get the pistol. Great start here, but mountains to climb to come back into this. Not underselling that <laughs> by any means. It is a long road back in, but a capable side. If you're only just seeing them now, you've missed a hell of a lot, but they are damn good at what they do loud, so give them a moment. Let's watch how it looks. And Carter can get first contact, and also just going to claim the scalp of Ye. Marv oh, actually does. Still at back again, that's a little bit of a bait here, but yeah, nice. sets it up perfectly. That's it, that's lovely. Cleaning up on the flawless in that second round here on the second half. Get a couple of bits and pieces maybe, nothing too much to write home about. And now we go into the real round. Now we did have the conversion of the bonus before, so this is something they've got to be eyeing up themselves as well. And Josh, even though it actually loud started with four unanswered rounds in the second half of the previous showing. Can they convert here? Three Spectres, a Marshall and a Bulldog. Doesn't look as if uh, maybe a little bit of aggression towards mid here from Shaw. Just looking to post up Aspas with that Marshall. And if he comes online here, now could string together. For me, it's, it's Pankata as well. Uh, watching their last game, I think he was instrumental in it. Absolutely. Absolutely loved how he looked in that. So I want to see a bit more of it. It looks like he's starting to warm into this as well. So good enough for me. That's a tick in the box. So that's trying to get a good start. Porsche back a little bit as well. Last time, actually, Pancada went like 12 and 4 on their defensive half, so he was instrumental. Well, I mean, this guy is truly an anchor on that A side as well. He's, put, he's got a lot of weight on your shoulders, a lot of that intuition, holding that A long push. You've got to feel out the timing, not overextend, but not to be too passive. Call the rotation when you need it is a tough job to do. So for him, it looks like he's going to pump himself into wine this time as we look at Optic going through the motions of this default. Just exploring, see if they can deal with any of the early aggression, run through some utility, try and draw some out, and pull that rotation away from where they want. So it looks like the A-side will be their eventual goal and then nothing changes, so we will have to see what Pankata can do. Tadak on the other side as well, but time being bought for rotation. A little bit of exploration towards middle hit from Ye. Perfect flash oh. through from Tadak as well. Oh, that's that nice. Burst. He double dips. 30, 30 seconds back. left. And seeing nothing is big, Mike. They see nothing there, so now they can maybe lean right back towards B or at least give the call of support because Yay, he's over pushing this one. Has a look towards CT and Les is now down, so it does seem as though they've broken through on the side. They pulled the rotation just perfectly. Marv gonna catch this as well. Sadak, do you check it? Nah, not a shot. Free fire almost from Marv there. <laughs> What do you do on the way back in? Thank God has got a Bulldog, I guess. The rest, not so equipped. Uh, okay. Ooh. No, it's fine, apparently. The uh, Marshal is good to go. My bad. Really I'll never now. doubt it. And it, it does look a little possible. It's this mid-fight to me, right? Marv looks so on the money for it. He seems super aware of this possibility. And how does Pankata approach it? Obviously, none the wiser to what's nice. behind him. And yeah, it's going to be the reveal. Beautiful work from Marv. His patience is paying off. 
composed, calm. But they have slipped through. So now FNS we're just gonna feel the bird and the brunt of it all. He's gone down now. Marv's trying to sweat bullets. He's gonna get back to sight. And oh, Sassy! He's got the time on the defuse. They just get across the line, doing right back to Optic what they did to them. I mean, that's such a key engagement there between Pancada and Marv. I mean, it defines the round ultimately. As soon as Marv shows his hand, they know that they can isolate this 2v1 on site. And they sped up quickly for it. Oh, yeah. As soon, it was the green light. As soon as that engagement comes through, I mean, you can see Aspas almost considering taking this engagement right here from Switch. Oh, Sassy <laughs> actually comes off with a perfect time. Man, the Brazilian fans. God, you gotta love to see it. It was the same with I just want that noise pumped in here. Honestly, I'll take it. Salak this time. He's gonna be the one to deal with a whole lot if he swings too wide. He's fine! It's three! Oh, it just slices them apart. And Optic gonna lose much of the potential of this round. Maybe if they wanted to get a little bit more away from Loud. Not gonna be the case. FNS, yeah, you've threaded the needle a little bit, but. Have I told you a story about the one before with FS I'm all friends? is. <laughs> I am all <laughs> is. <laughs> well, it's crazy. It starts off, he like mm. threads through tree, right? And then he goes up towards kind of, you know, the rafters. Does on he the get Aspas first? Well, you think he does, but actually, it's Pancada. I'm lying. It, it is Aspas, of course. And then he gets the operator, kills him. And then it just, you know, it, oh, oh. it wasn't this round, of course. Um, it's it was actually one, uh, in a different game. But yeah. it is 10 to 6. It's allowed doing exactly what it needed. That, was, that round was kind of dealt with very early on with that 3K that came out. All possibility just nullified. So now we look at the, the real well, deal, right? I'm having deja vu. <laughs> There's four unanswered rounds here to start yep. the second half. Optic had to get a pump the brakes now, call a timeout. Uh, rightfully so. We're expecting a little bit of a pace change, maybe an adjustment here, lean heavier on an all in sight execute. Because again, it's almost feeling pretty similar to the first half. There's, there's not an awful. A lot of tangible information here that Optic have to act upon. I mean, they're not comfortably finding these first engagements. Sure. And then actually following on from that, they're not comfortably winning them either. So yeah, whether or not, uh, I mean, Ye yeah, actually still opting to ride through with the rifles. I mean, the, the, the economy's not there with how this has no. gone so far to, to support an operator. Ultimate's just about coming online now. FNS two off the lockdown, Victor two away, and Ye two off as well. Well, look, Crashies is actually going to be the one to open things up with the Hunter's Fury here. Let's wait and see, but definitely expecting a, a big change coming out of this time out here. We have to just ask the question, do Optic have the chops to be able to identify problems on the fly like this? This this is this is a tough you know, question to be asked. There's, there's not an easy answer to much of this. And for Loud, it's still resilience. As much as, yes, we have seen four on the trot, there's still a couple rounds behind Optic here. So it's, again, the moment of can can Loud actually close this out now? Can they pull that scoreline right back or even we have to wait and see? Because so far, it does look like they are certainly on course for it. Nice reveal. Going to find two of them there. Right, the position early on. And slow things down as well. Mm. I mean, I'd counter that with where Optic have looked best is having to problem solve, <laughs> troubleshooting. Again, FNS, the, the backbone of that sort of equation, to be honest with you, but yeah. we've got to see it here. I mean, this would be a, a fumble to allow another buy round conceded here, and it will bring Loud within touch of distance in my eyes. Absolutely right, less. It's going to be you and Pancada to try and deal with what's coming your way. Quickly dealt with on the first, Jay. Gonna work his way in towards sight. And now you've got to look at the second string to this. The people behind Ye. Does he get. Oh. Ye actually found Zadak there. I thought they might have noticed him slipping through. He's kept it in mind, but it wasn't the case at all. And he's still being a nuisance. Two up towards the rafters and Aspas trying to clear through, but you can see the nuisance this man is. And Ye won't stop. Just ripping them apart. And now two, Pancada and Aspas still alive, but where are they and what can they do with this? One by tree, one towards rafters. Operated to hand, and they need more than this. They need that springboard suppressed again. So few options. It looks like they're on the verge of giving this one up at this point. Yeah, he's still prowling around, gets found. Can there be an answer back in? No yes, way. Pancada's found another. And no oh, way. Pancada, that is the loud you've got to be worried about. That's the team that are never done in these scenarios. The fuse comes in, it's seven for loud. And they are right back in the game, Mike. That's a tough blow. I almost feel like Optic had that again. They're so cautious, so hesitant here. Once this post plant slows down a little bit. 
Yeah. And I... Jaeger is huge for them as well. There's so much damage, and he's actually holding back this entire Heaven Push solo. Yes, yes. That was like, what, two, three players at one point. Pancada again, man. He's, he's a nasty little player, Pancada. Well, they burnt, the thing, the crazy thing is they have the power, and I think it's actually burnt up so early there. Mm. So that's literally just coming back in completely dry. Like, nothing yep. to work off. There's no dash. It was there's no cloud one burst. pick on Ye, exactly. and that was it. And it's just like, oh, okay, so we're going to fall to pieces. And now they've broken the money enough that Optic are going to be on very little this round. So you've got to imagine it's eight. So again, that scoreboard just closing in and closing in. And Aspas closing down. Ye tries to get aggressive, keeps his life. Three HP, gets out of there. Just wants to play his life at this point. Give him a second to breathe. As Optic were desperate to close down on it, but it wasn't going to be allowed. Of a swing on short. That's information, unless doesn't overstay his welcome. This is why that previous round was so important. And this is the one where the blade storm's burnt up. It's really actually going to throw Optic's ultimate cycle off kill to hit. Conceding that buy round now. Sassy slips away. Aspas still posted up with the operator, so not really feeling any pressure just yet. Uh, other than that. Other than that. Well. Uh, drop tick. Uh, you're not meant to be doing this right now. And 3 HP on Aspas. This is really concerning now. It is, but it's still an operator. And we know what the lore is. doesn't matter the HP. You can still do as much damage as possible, but it is a 2v2. Problem is, Tommy could find the kill. Tommy really could. Tommy becomes the third man of the team. So maybe it is a 3v2. And maybe it doesn't matter because Marv is holding that cross in Aspas. Oh, it's not even Tommy. It's not even Tommy who does it. Optic, zero right in that round to pull that off. No, uh, and even, even yes, uh, I mean, finding the kill with the operator on crashes, it's, it's noted then. It's almost like the later that comes, the better for Loud in that sure. scenario. Almost allowing them past forcing the plant and then being in a position to, to really stabilize on the way back in. But, I mean, actually, considering the run Loud have got, look at the finances behind this. Like I said, it does throw Optic's old cycle off kilter a little bit. They do still have victors to work with. Blade Storm, Hunter's Fury, and the TP on the other side for Pancada. Can Optic find map point now? I have a spike. Little trade out of info. Picked up. Waiting patiently on the other side. Does have support, so he's not alone in this. Flash! No intention behind it, but Sadak trying to bait out the look towards short in case there was that follow-up. Key thing here as well is Victor that they know on the other side, right? So they're almost anticipating potentially an A hit, but you don't want to over-rotate. If that null command gets popped, you must want to be giving it up, especially considering you have the Hunter's Fury, you can play from distance here and completely mitigate that risk. But as he is all the way over towards B right now. I mean, he's got the timing to find it, but... Whether or not actually... To say, yeah, the rotation comes through. I was considering if Optic were to try and plant the seed, sell a fake here, but how and are going to get sent through? Did you catch Shadak? No. no. Shadak's fine. That's a huge issue. He can just spam this cross if he wants to. At least a bit of damage as well towards Victor. Not a great deal, but it's Pancada. It's Aspas who are the back line, who are unrelenting and unmoving. Look at them again. Crashies just out swings and takes down Aspas. Sassy still holds it good together as Crashies now left. In a very tough scenario, 13 seconds, and you've got a player behind you as well. Crashies knows that this is not going to be comfortable. Hunter's Fury's going to come out. Seven seconds now. He's got to try and play the game. He can tank at least one hit if he has to. But the door what? breaks. He, he takes down it. less, but I think he's out of time on this. It's done for. It's run down. The clock was his biggest opponent in the end. Stay taught as a boasting. Sassy buying just enough time there with the Hunter's Fury, but... Again, like you said, it's just noting that Sadak isn't caught with this paranoia. I'm not sure what the, the exact intention is, whether or not the angle was just to avoid and maybe catch towards heaven, because it's kind of diagonal across the generator. So let's try to switch up there. And actually, it, it does punish Optic. 11 to 8. Yes, it's traded, but look what Ye did last time, holding that heaven retake. One round closer again. As soon as Optic get one on the board, there is an answer back by Loud, correcting any mistakes, and maybe a pace change on this. 
a draw towards identifying this push out on main potentially. And this play, if they can speed it up on shore, would actually be very valuable. They'll be caught in a really uncomfortable position. It looks like Ye wants to try and do this, but it's going to be Aspas on the other side. He slipped through, they have no idea. Now they do. Aspas unleashes Fury, takes down Victor. Static denies Marv, and it's on Ye, who's somehow done the same. He spots one, I think he saw another, and his crash is in combination to find the two on the site. But with the spike left loose, they still need to readdress this. Get that back into process, back into hand, because Loud aren't far away. FNS has got to make a move here. Yes, he's low HP, but he has to make something happen from this position. Stale, mate. Oh, <laughs> too good, Aspas. Now they do at least get a spike back. You'd see the intention on the swing from Aspas, but he couldn't quite get there in time to crest the corner. But on the double dip, he does. Crashes a. goes down, and now it's just spike. one. Yay. Can you bring your team back into this attack on the spike? And it's a shot in the back. There's nothing more to be said. It's nine for Loud. And they are back in this game round by round. They are finding ways through.